Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to the 2013 Torbo National Men's Soccer Game of the Week presented by the NSCAA and Admiral Soccer. This afternoon's national spotlight includes Bellhaven versus Rio Grande live on NSCAATV.com. I'm Kyle Robbins alongside former Rio Grande All-American Joel Tyson. Joel, this is going to be a matchup of two teams coming off a quick turnaround last night in this Indiana Wesleyan tournament. Ryo coming off a double overtime win over Davenport University last evening, and Bellhaven, uh, a squad coming off a loss to homestanding Indiana Wesleyan in front of 3,000 last night. Joel, we're in for a uh, fantastic afternoon on the pitch here. Yeah, it looks good. Uh, obviously, we've got two teams here that are big names in the NAIA, so it'll be an interesting performance from both of them. We'll see how it pans out. Joel, of course, for you, this is a, a little bit of a homecoming in the sense that you get a get to visit with and you were able to visit with your uh, your former coach uh, before this ball game and uh, get, get to get a little familiar with the squad that's on on the pitch now what will we see in terms of your and for, from your experience and from your opinion uh, from this Ryo squad well Ryo uh, are known for wanting to keep possession and playing the ball around which is which is you know typical for Scott Morrissey's teams um, you know, they've got a bunch of new faces in here some young boys so it'll be interesting to see how they uh, how they adapt to the, the formation that they're playing and you know, it's going to be an exciting game, that's for sure. Of course, Ryo will play that 3-5-2 across the, across the back of, of their formation tonight. Bellhaven out of Jackson, Mississippi. This is a squad that was the 2012 national champion in NAIA soccer, of course. And, Joel, the, the squad that uh, unfortunately ended your collegiate career, you mentioned as we were talking <laughs> before the broadcast. Yeah, unfortunately, that was the, uh, the last game I played with Ryo was against Bellhaven. Um, but, you know, they're a good team. They're, they're coached well, and... Uh, I'm sure they'll uh, put a put a tough tough team out on the field today. You know, I had a chance to visit with head coach Brian McMahon before this ball game, and he mentioned two guys both missing uh, both of their center backs tonight. We'll see how they adapt. Uh, this is a squad where we'll see many changes from the starting lineup that we were sent a few days before coming out last night's uh, loss to Indiana Wesleyan. Of course, uh, Bellhaven playing uh, less than 24 hours again before they pl uh, also took the field last night. Just uh, we'll take a short break here, and when we come back, we will uh, talk a little bit more about this matchup tonight between Bellhaven and Rio Grande. You've been listening to live coverage of the 2013 Torbo National Men's Soccer Game of the Week presented by the NSCAA and Admiral Soccer. Each year, the NSCAA puts over 7,000 coaches through our coaching education program. Youth, high school, and college coaches at all levels participate in the diploma courses. Join your peers and get educated. Better coaching, better players, better game. NSCAA Coaching Academy. Improving soccer, one coach at a time. Register today at nscaa.com slash education. Tra la la tra la tra la Pleasure. Finding the right college or university to meet your individual needs can be challenging. As the nation's only combined private university and public community college, Rio Grande allows students to minimize costs while gaining a global education. Students enjoy the personal attention of a passionate faculty at a 15 to 1 ratio with more than 60 academic programs. So why not choose an institution as unique as you? You're one of a kind. So are we. Finding the right college. Welcome back to Wildcat Field, Bellhaven, Rio Grande, NAIA Soccer here on NSCAA TV and Torbo Sports. Just want to remind you of our hotel sponsor for this afternoon's game, the College Inn. The College Inn is a five-room bed and breakfast located just steps from Indiana Wesleyan University and across the street from the College Wesleyan Church. Jack Gardner is the founder of the College Inn Bed and Breakfast and has tailored this old house to maximize comfort. Guests will discover five 
features five distinct rooms, cleverly creating an upscale boutique hotel atmosphere without sacrificing the charming and appeal of an in intimate inn and a location close to all the action at Indiana Wesleyan University. College Inn is the area's most comfortable and convenient place to stay while visiting Indiana Wesleyan University. Back here, I'm Kyle Robbins alongside uh, my, my Cullen commentator here, the former All-American for, uh, for Rio, Rio Grande. And, Joel, we mentioned this uh, uh, just, a, just a minute earlier. You know, this is going to be a matchup between two teams that are coming off uh, short rest. Talk a little bit about how, uh, how you as a player um, in these situations where you would play a Friday and Saturday game, what it's like for you turning around and playing on this, on this short rest. Well, it's never easy uh, waking up the next day and having to prepare for another game. But uh, these boys have been doing it for, for a while now, you know, apart from the freshman kids. But, uh, you know, these teams are big teams for one reason. They've got consistency. They can get up the next day and they can prepare just like it's any other game day. So I'm expecting, you know, some tired legs out there. But in saying that, they've got deep squads and I'm sure they'll, they'll put out a good performance for sure. Certainly. We'll get to the starting lineups here in just a minute. And as I... When I spoke with the uh, obviously the Bellhaven squad before the game, they mentioned we're going to see a lot of different guys tonight. They're a squad um, still going through that transition period of finding um, finding their flow on the pitch, and they've mentioned they'll play um, much further deep than the starting eleven that will come onto the field tonight. We might see 18, 19, 20 guys coming onto the field for this squad, uh, and we'll get to the starting lineups here in just a second, about 40 minutes from kick, and we'll take a look at how Bellhaven. And Ryo will line up tonight. We mentioned Joel. Ryo will play a 3-5-2. Uh, talk a little bit about how Scott Morrissey, how they, how they like to play across this formation. Well, like I said in the, in the beginning there, they like to keep the ball. So I'm expecting the midfielders to get on it nice and early, uh, direct the play. Um, they're playing with two wider players today, and Craig Davies out on the left. Um, he's got a great delivery, so I'm expecting him to get down the line, whip some balls in, and, and get him into the big lads so they can head the ball. But, uh, you know, it, it's, it's going to be a, a tough game for both teams. Like you said, they've, uh, they're backing up from a big game yesterday. These two teams, um, I mean, I, I'm expecting big things. It's going to be a big clash. Two big teams out of the NAIA. It'll be interesting. Of course, for Bellhaven, they'll go across the lineup, 4-2-3-1. Uh, from them, a little, we'll see several changes, and we'll update you on those throughout the game. But we'll see Carl Blundell and Goal, the senior from York, England. He'll be between the posts tonight for Bellhaven. Across the back line, we'll see David Cole, number two, the defender, the junior from O'Fallon, Illinois, one of the few Americans on either of these rosters tonight. Um, also across the back tonight, we will see Marco Pavlin, David Major, and uh, one of and from Nairobi, Kenya, the sophomore Kimathi Kambutho, the one of the defenders that will be filling in for those two guys that Bellhaven, of course, is missing across the back line. In the middle of the formation tonight will be Tom Gavin and Eduardo Cruz, and then across the top of with the the three attacking midfielders that uh, Bellhaven mentioned they would play before this game would be uh, Fournier, France and Presti, and of course sitting on top of the formation normally would be Will Monsoor, but we will actually not see him tonight. Instead, uh, the coaching staff mentioning me to me before the game, they weren't quite sure who they'll first come out with on top of the formation tonight, so we'll have to check that here as we get going. Clock has run down here, and we are set to go from Marion, Indiana, beautiful Marion, Indiana, nestled in the North Central part of the state on the campus of Indiana Wesleyan University. As we mentioned before the game, a term, 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 <laughs> tournament style format here. Uh, Joel, and we talked about that, how, what it was like playing these back to backs here before. Bellhaven, of course, the number one team in the country, coming off the loss last night to Indiana Wesleyan here in front of 3,000 fans. Rio Grande, the number nine team in the country under Scott Morrissey. They are 2 0 on the year. Bellhaven. 1-1-1, one, one and, one. and that draw coming to another team that you're very familiar with, Joel, uh, Lindsey Wilson earlier in the year. Yeah, uh, Lindsey Wilson, another powerhouse in the, in the NAIA. It's going uh, to be a big game today. These two, these two teams don't have any love lost. Um, you know, the last time I was out on the field, there was, there was some rough, rough challenges and a few big hits, but, uh, you know, hopefully the, the game flows well and both teams can, can show what they have. You know, we'll hear from uh, both coaches here at halftime. We were able to speak to – you were able to speak to uh, Scott Morrissey, but I was as well. We spoke to him a little bit about what he told the players before the game, and as well as uh, Brian McMahon from Bellhaven uh, was very kind to take about 30 minutes to chat with me before the game and just mentioned, you know, uh, it's been tough on this squad adjusting from the national championship team they've had uh, last year 
uh, replacing injuries, uh, guys with eligibility issues with the NAIA, and uh, certainly going to uh, be a challenge for this Bellhaven team to adapt uh, to a very game squad, your alma mater in Rio Grande. As both teams get set here for the World Cup style walkout and we get set to go here from Marion, Indiana. NSCAA soccer here on NSCAA TV. I'm Kyle Robbins. He's Joel Taylor, the, uh, the Australian native. <laughs> I guess so, right? <laughs> Coming to you doing NAIA soccer here in the heartland of Indiana. We'll take a short break here right before kick. When we come back, we will have live soccer, Bellhaven, Rio Grande here on NSCAA TV. Each year, the NSCAA puts over yeah, 7,000 No, it's fine. It's fine. I was... Program. Youth, high school, and college coaches at all levels participate in the diploma courses. Join your peers and get educated. Better coaching, better players, better game. NSCAA Coaching Academy. Improving soccer, one coach at a time. Register today at nscaa.com slash education. National Anthem concluded, and we are set to go here from Wildcat Field in Marion, Indiana. This is the Indiana Wesleyan Tournament and the Torbo Sports National Men's Soccer Game of the Week on NSCAA TV. I'm Kyle Robbins. Alongside me, former Rio Grande All-American Joel Tyson, not Joel Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> the Australian International will be... Breaking down this game for you, bringing you his, uh, his insights as we get set to go as the announcers read these starting lineups. We keep thinking we're ready to go here, but not quite. They're uh, taking their precious, precious time here in, uh, in Marion, Indiana. 
Joel, though, as, as we mentioned here before, um, this is a program that you're very familiar with. Uh, yep. what, did, uh, what did Coach Scott Morrissey have to say to you here um, when you guys, you know, were catching up? Give us a little insight to your, uh, to your conversation uh, uh, when you guys were able to get back together over there before the bench prior to the game. Yeah, it was good to catch up with Scotty. He uh, basically let me know that, you know, they've got a new team. There's a lot of new players out there. They lost a lot of, a lot of players at the end of last season through graduation and, and various other things. So it'll be interesting to see how they line up and uh, what sort of formation they play and, and how they go about this game. You mentioned before that they... They played last night, so there's going to be a few changes to the team. Um, but they've got a deep squad, you know. They brought, they brought a good number of players out here, and they've got some experience in there as well. So it'd be up to the younger players to step up and, and put a performance on, and I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be a good game. Of course, Scott Morrissey in his 25th season with Rio Grande. Uh, would you say typically, Joel, that this is a squad and this is a program that they're going to run out a lot of players, especially on a hot day today like this uh, here in Indiana? Yeah, definitely. You know, you've got to you got to use what you have. You've got to make sure that you you're doing your subs correctly and making sure you're not running plays into the ground. They're backing up from yesterday, so there's going to be some tired legs, as I mentioned before. Um, so you're just getting through the game and making sure that they've got the strongest team out there at all times is going to be key for them. Of course, R of course, Rio, as we mentioned, picked up that double overtime win over Davenport last night. So. Probably uh, a little bit of uh, short legs for the squad. Might see some guys coming out with some early, early substitutions. As finally here we get set to go from Wildcat Field in Marion, Indiana, just to reset. NSCAA TV, this is the 2013 Torbo National Men's Soccer Game of the Week. I'm Kyle Robbins. He's Joel Tyson. I uh, want to thank our entire wonderful, wonderful production crew here in Marion, Indiana. We're set for another wonderful day of soccer here in the Heartland. Still slow getting going. We thought this game was going to kick off at 4.30. Going to get closer to, uh, might be closer to 4.45 once we finally get the ball dropped in the middle of the field. Bellhaven, of course, will be wearing the white and green for the squad out of Jackson, Mississippi this evening. They will come out, as we mentioned, in that 4-2-3-1. They'll play one up top on their formation with three attacking mid in the midfield. Two holding midfield and then four across the back line. The storyline to follow for Bellhaven. The two center backs, they have not played the same back line, Joel, this entire season. And that's certainly got to be tough for a squad that's already dealing with a lot of transition from last year. Yeah, it's going to be hard uh, taking two players out of the heart of defense. But, you know, a team like this, they're number one in the nation for a reason. You know, they've got depth. They know how to recruit properly. So... I'm sure that the two players they've brought in are going to be up to the job. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's up to them to put on a, to put on a big game and, and, and make sure that they get through the game with no goals against. You know, both sides are going to be out there to score a lot. And we'll see what happens. The Red Storm of Rio Grande, the Blazers of Bellhaven. We're set to go here from Marion, Indiana. We'll start it from the back and early pressure here coming on from Rio. Quickly taken away by Bellhaven in the middle of the field and we'll bounce it around for a little bit. We'll see who will maintain possession and early foul. We'll go the other way here. Early opportunity here for Ryo. Expect a few goal, a few tackles and a few, uh, a few free kicks in the start of the game. You know, um, both teams are going to be feeling each other out, so it'll take a little, a few minutes to, to get the, the flow of the game going. But uh, I'm sure it'll happen very, here very soon. D Mello will take this, take this free kick. We'll see if they try to take the opportunity to drive it inside the 18. We'll chip this one up, but no problem taken away here from Bellhaven. Maintained an, an opportunity there to go into the corner, but nothing doing and brought away here by Bellhaven on this hot day in Marion, Indiana. Possession bouncing around. The man up top tonight will be Zapata for the Red Storm. Orlando Zapata, the senior from Medellin, Colombia. Orlando's got a lot of pace up top, so it'll be interesting to see if the midfielders can, get, can release him and get him into the pocket so, uh, so he can get some goals, uh, get some runs on goal. Uh, he's got a lot of pace. He's a wiry character, so it'll be interesting to see how he gets on. Of course, a guy that you're probably quite familiar with being a senior on the squad, of course, when you were there a few years ago. Yeah. Oppor opportunity here coming on for Bellhaven, this squad coming off the loss last night. Here, possession held here in the, uh, in the near corner of the field. And no call that time of the contact, and back the other way comes the Red Storm. And now reset for Bellhaven. Bounce it around and try to get a play on early, and then a dangerous play call that time on David Cole. A little bit scrappy here so far. Um, they're still trying to work out where they're going with the ball, so 
hopefully we can get the ball on the deck and play a little bit of attractive football soon. Trying to get started, exactly. Haven mentioned for this game, um, and Brian McMahon was that they would have this opportunity. They're a squad that likes to play with pace. They like to play with that sort of flow, and they might take a few uh, a few minutes in this ball game getting that set to go. Here's an opportunity for Rio coming on this time will be Rodriguez. Opportunity one on one strike coming Oof. and just inside the near part of the goal. Nice early opportunity there for Rio. Uh, like I said, it came out of uh, a little bit of scrappy play in the midfield, but they were able to release Rodriguez down the right there. So uh, yeah, things are looking all right for Rio. Belhaven with the ball now. Pal Delgado Rodriguez, the freshman from Barcelona, Spain, playing here in the near side of the formation. Opportunity coming back from Belhaven, looking to punch right back to have their first opportunity on goal. Looking like a ball that bounced off maybe a shoulder over there that time of DeMello. A little, no little bit of indecision there between, yeah. uh, between Cesar and uh, John Dodson in goal there, but uh, they were able to clear it out. Belhaven are definitely putting on the pressure. Belhaven might look to convert off a much like a set-piece opportunity here with a long throw. Take it short instead and off a Rio player once again. Throw and will come all the way to, oh. way to the back to Bramba. The right back tonight. And this 4-2-3-1 formation. Near sideline, try to get something going and just over the touchline, and it'll be back the other way for Ryo. Really struggling to get, uh, to get much flow on the pitch going thus far for Belhaven. Both teams are struggling to get the ball down at the moment. Um, you know, again, they're still trying to find each other out, feel each other out and how the field's playing. Um, you know, it's end-to-end -end at the moment. McCabe possessing in the middle, and we do have a player down for Belhaven. We'll see how long they play on before a stoppage of play here and they will kick it out of bounds we'll see who that is down as we'll whistle for a clock stoppage here I do believe for Bellhaven we'll try to get a number as he's rolled onto his back right there looks like that might be David Major and that's correct David Major the Senior from East Grenstead, England. Check that. That's actually Tom Gavin, number 60, sophomore from Bristol, England. Looked like he took a shot to the side of the head there, but he'll jog it off no problems. And we'll get set to go. We'll see if a, another player will come onto the pitch here for Bellhaven as we can get that, if we can get that number as soon as we can here. Looks like he might just uh, receive treatment and they uh, and they might just play with... Uh, oh, it looks, looks like they're back at full strength. We'll try to get a, a number on the man that came in. So. Ryo do them the courtesy of, to Bellhaven and they'll boot it all the way to the back and they'll start over. Joel Ryo here with a couple of opportunities. Coming, making a nice run that time was Rodriguez, and the ball will come back to him with an opportunity. Looks like Maxi Rodriguez is trying to get on the ball in the middle of the park there to uh, try and direct play a little bit. Here comes an opportunity for Bellhaven now down the near side. This will be Metz possessing, possessing in the corner. Look to make a step, a play over in, in front of the box. Strike on goal. And easily taken away. Bruno Petrobelli, the freshman from Sonacoba, Brazil with the strike that time, but no problems for Rio. It's a nice early opportunity for Belhaven to get a shot on goal, test out John Dodson in goal, so. The first opportunity they've had to put one on frame in this ball game. For that matter, for any side to put one on frame in this ball game. Brombot, now over on the near sideline, this will be Victor Lawrence. The game's opened up a little bit. Belhaven and Rio being able to string a few passes together, so it's, it's looking a little bit prettier now. Was quite sloppy early, ball bouncing around, not much able to get going, but now we'll have some opportunities. A look for Metz again here on the near sideline. Headed down, here's an opportunity again from Petrobelli. Back to David Cole, he'll look to work the near sideline. One, two quick pass this time, and too much of a touch from Tom Gavin re-entering the ball game. Ryo will try it again. Bill Haven's put on a lot of pressure at the moment, not giving Ryo any, any opportunities to get out of the back. 
working here and not much space over here on this near sideline. And booted off of Metz's back and will come back here for the Red Storm. And Rio's trying to clear their lines and get it up the other end of the park, but Bellhaven aren't giving them the opportunity at all. Rio backed up into the corner here. Pressure applied by Bellhaven. Big clearance coming. Back to Kombuth, though. Headed on. Unable to bring it down and poorly possessed that time by Bellhaven. And here's the opportunity Rio needed to get it out of their half. Throw in coming this time from Rodriguez. But he's called off of it. And Turjan, the senior from France, will come to take the throw in. Romain Turjan, excuse me, the sophomore, playing the right back position tonight. Look to play the one-two touch pass. Nice bit of play for Briar. Inside here, opportunity coming. This well, will be well, Zapata, strike on goal, but no opportunity that time as it is easily brought down by Carl Blundell. Zapata with a shot from about 25 yards. It's a long way out for Zapata to strike a ball. On target, though, on target. The first opportunity for Rio to put one on target tonight. Zapata, certainly when you say, Joel, be a man to uh, key on for this squad for the rest of the game. Yeah, he's, uh, like I said earlier, he's got a lot of pace. If he gets out in the open, then, uh, it's going to take a lot to catch him. So I'm sure Rio are looking to release him nice and early uh, with uh, Vieira in the midfield too. So Thought we might have an opportunity coming, but it looks like an offside flag will be up as... Zapata looked to develop something there on the opposite corner flag. Joel, anybody else off the top of your head that we might, might want to keep, uh, keep an eye on for the viewers at home uh, here tonight for the, uh, for the, Rio Grand, or the Rio Grande Red Storm? Rio to Tonigawa from, the, from Rio in the midfield. He's a, he's a good player on the ball. He, he moves the ball extremely well, and he, he enables the, the strikers to get into space. He... He typically doesn't get too far forward, but he, he likes to keep the ball and get the ball ticking over from side to side. Um, Vieira up top, he's playing alongside um, Zapata. He's another character to look out for. He, he, can, he can get an opportunity and get strikes on goal at, at, at a lot of the time too. So, Goal kick here coming for Rio, and they'll look to make an opportunity out of it. Sliding challenge and well played that time by Bellhaven over on that far sideline. That was David Major, the senior, on that sliding challenge. But still no clearance, and Ryle will maintain possession around the middle of the field here. And, of course, the curse of the commentator over the end of the touchline and back the other way here for Bellhaven. Still uh, not much flow to this game, though, thus far, Joel, outside of that up a couple of opportunities. Both teams are applying a lot of pressure. They're not letting... Not letting the other team get on the ball and have too much time. It, it's good to see both teams are, are out there to win this one. So it's, it's, not, a, it's not a dud game at all. It's, it's entertaining so far. Entertaining so far. A couple of shots, early shots on frame here. 30 inside, 36 minutes to go here in the first half. Just nine minutes in. Played from the back, Blondell. Now down the sideline, an opportunity looking for Major, but that pass off target. But a poor clearance by Rio, and we'll see if this is an opportunity. You, you feel like um, there might be an opportunity here for Bell, Bellhaven coming. You know, the, something that Scott Morrissey mentioned to me was the excellent pace they have uh, on the wings this Bellhaven ball club. It looks like the defenders are trying to get the... The wide players on the ball nice and early so they can run at the Rio defenders. Um, they've had a few opportunities and it, it looks like they're wearing the Rio down a little bit, but uh, you know, it, it's, it's a tough game at the start here. Fatigue, something to certainly keep a factor or keep an eye on. It will be a factor in this ball game. Um, if you're just joining us, both of these teams did play last night. Of course, Bellhaven, the number one team in the country, falling to Indiana Wesleyan uh, last evening here, the homestanding Indiana Wesleyan Wildcats. Uh, two to one in front of what, what I was told about 3,000 fans, and that's just phenomenal for NAIA soccer, Joel. That's a lot of people to be at an NAIA game, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly NAIA soccer in the middle of Indiana. Yes. Uh, th that is uh, not a usual occurrence, but a, uh, a wonderful program here at, uh, at Indiana Wesleyan, and uh, certainly a congratulatory and a big win for them over a program like Bellhaven. Definitely. It's good to see those numbers getting out to the NAIA games. Um, you know, typically these schools are considered smaller and uh, they don't get the crowds that they deserve a lot of the time. So that's really good to hear. It's promising. Header on this time from Mets and possibility here's for Bellhaven. 
but no problems. Brought away by Rio. Rodriguez looking for the clearance, but not able to. Looks like Bellhaven had the majority of the play at the moment. They're keeping possession pretty well now. So uh, the, the game's still being played in the middle of the park. It hasn't opened up completely yet, but it looks like it might go one way or the other soon. Bellhaven seemingly applying pressure. David Major on the far sideline. The fullback position. The look to play down the far side. One two touch passing. Not able to maintain possession was Major. But looks like a foul call, and they will have a set piece opportunity from about, oh, Cal what, 40, 45 yards out here for Bellhaven. Bellhaven have got a few big lads too, so I'm sure they'll be looking to fire it straight into the box here. Looks like Tom Gavin will take this one. We'll see how they line up at the top of the 18. An opportunity to challenge Ryo here early. 33 minutes to go. Here it comes from Gavin. It's a good in ball. Swinger, in the box. Cleared away, though. No problems. Headed away. Looked like DeMello was the man to get ahead on that one as he chases it out. But another throw in coming here for the Blazers. That was a good in-swinging ball from the, from the right-hand side of the field. Uh, Raya did well to get that out of the box. It was delivered with a lot of pace. Throw in coming. Elect against the long throw. And corner kick opportunity coming as it was knocked out of bounds off a man in black. Looks like David Cole will be the man to take this one, this junior defender from England, English international. Of course, both of these teams with that uh, the international flavor, our broadcast does that as well. In swinger, here we come, coming to the near post and headed away once again. We'll be right back out to Cole. He'll have an opportunity. Coming inside, block by DeMello. Right under a lot of pressure here. Bellhaven are firing some decent balls into the box. Bellhaven with three opportunities there to get balls coming across the face of the goal, not able to capitalize. Really not able to put one, on, one of those on frame. This will be Gavin here. Look to switch fields, not able to do so. Picked off by Rodriguez, and here come the Red Storm. Ball coming out in the behind the defense. This Orlando will be Zapata. Zapata. One on one, around and the keeper. Finishes. Back of the net, Orlando Zapata. 1-0, Rio Grande. There's that ball in behind that Zapata was waiting for. Took one touch around the keeper and was able to slot it straight down the middle of the goal. Well done. Joel Tyson, you ought to get yourself some lottery tickets. You predicted that one early. The man <laughs> we mentioned. The man we mentioned to Keon, Orlando Zapata. The Colombian international. 1-0 in favor of the Rio Grande Red Storm early. And a wonderful counterattack opportunity there by Rio. Just looks like Bellhaven put too many people forward at that, at that time of the game. Um, they were looking to put a lot of pressure into the box. We had mentioned before the game, Bellhaven missing their two starting center backs. Or what would be their two starting center backs at the beginning of the year. One out with the torn quad, the other with an eligibility issue. Here's the man, Petrobelli, holding the possession in the middle of the field. The Brazilian. Taken away here by Rio, and here comes another opportunity to look to make it 2-0. Far sideline, looking for Zapata again, making the run toward the flag. Zapata is on the ball, out wide on the left. In swinger, but nobody on the back end of it there. Cleared away by Bellhaven. And now here's the game opening up. Here's what we like to see, Joel. Well won by Caesar in the middle of the park again. Here's central defender coming out from the back. Rodriguez tried to find the run that time, coming from Vieira, but not able to do anything with it. Here comes Metz down the sideline. One-on-one, -on -one working against Turgeon. Ball coming into the box. There would have been an opportunity there, Joel, if somebody could have been on the back end of that. Yeah, it looks like uh, Bellhaven committed a few people too, for, too, too far forward in, on those last two opportunities there. Um, now they're sitting in a little bit deeper, so they didn't, they didn't have that extra man forward, which it probably would have fell to if he was there. Rodriguez active early. A lot of touches for him. Terjan. Well won. Well won by Bellhaven. Taken away that time. Gavin was the man that made that interception. David Cole back to Gavin. The captain, the skipper of this side. 
Gavin looks like the guy who's going to be directing the play for Bellhaven. He's getting on the ball nice and early. Middle of the park, turning and looking, looking to link play up top. So he's one to look out for, definitely. David Major, big boot on this time, looking for Mets in the middle of the field, but not enough white jerseys there. And we won't see a flag go up yet. Now finally the ball will bounce out of play and it'll come back here for Ryo. Looks like there's a few signs of fatigue early on in this game. The game has been stretched stretched quite considerably from the start of the game. They, they were firing all, at, at all cylinders at the start. It was a little bit scrappy. Now the game's been stretched a lot longer. So there's a little bit more space in the middle of the park. The ball's slowing down. Uh, it looks like you know, both teams, Ryo and Belhaven, are going to have a little bit more time in the middle of the park to direct their, direct their plays forward. Would you say almost a little bit, Joel, uh, Belhaven a little bit, a uh, little bit disorganized up top in the attacking, attacking third uh, thus far, unable to get uh, anybody in the end of those, uh, on the end of those runs sometimes? Yeah, the building play really well. They're getting, they're getting the ball nice and wide. Oh, here we go. Here comes the opportunity, looking for Metz has really been the man that has been floating to the top of that formation, even though he's really lining up more as a wide midfielder. Looking to swing it in again. On the back of that one over there is major battling for possession. Here it comes, coming near post, opportunity taken away, no problems by John Dodson. That's about the third or fourth ball that Bellhaven's delivered pretty decently into the box. They've just got no one to get on the end of him at the moment. They've got uh, one striker up top, and he's trying to do everything for himself. Uh, they need some support up there. John Dodson has been pretty sure-handed so far uh, for the Red Storm, wouldn't you say, Joel? Definitely, definitely. He's doing really well. Bellhaven bringing the pressure once again. Certainly, you, uh, you might say this is a in terms of possession, we've seen probably almost 60-40 in favor of the men in the white jerseys. Yeah, Bellhaven are keeping the ball quite well at the moment. Uh, Ryo uh, are countering, um, but Bellhaven are directing most of the play. It's all, it's all play in the middle of the park. They're building play, getting their wide players on the ball, delivering balls. Uh, Ryo just taking advantage of those, those lapses in concentration while they're going forward. Eduardo Cruz entering the ball game for the Blazers. Number 17 in white. He's from Sao Paulo, Brazil. He'll play the holding midfield position, it looks like. Cole. Switching the sides of the formation here. This will be Brambat. Playing that right to center back formation. Looks like we've also had a, another substitution in, at the center back position. That'll be Steven Simmons entering the ball game. He'll replace Kamathi Kambutho, who was the man that got beat on that early goal by Zapata. Zapata, Zapata took that ball really well. He took it one touch by the goalkeeper and then placed it nice, nice and easily down the middle of the goal. He did extremely well to get around the keeper at that point. Certainly a class finish from the Colombian International. Bellhaven, though, doing an excellent job of maintaining possession, Joel, but uh, that, that one counter, outside of that opportunity, we have seen very good play from the Blazers thus far. Definitely, yeah. Uh, Bellhaven are... They've got the, the majority of the play. They're, they're directing the play. They're moving the ball from side to side. They're building their opportunities as they, as they move further up the field. It's just whether or not they can get the ball in the box or get a strike from outside the area. Cruz will play an early touch here, get himself involved, get comfortable with the feel of the play. Here's another opportunity for Zapata. One on two, but nicely taken away there by Cole. And here comes Metz back down the near sideline, battling against Rodriguez. Back over this time to the skipper. This will be Gavin. Across the formation to McCabe. Back to Cruz, the freshman in the ballgame. Takes a tumble and taken away by Ryo. DeMello. Tried to play that one out. Finally possessed here by the men in black. And, of course, as soon as I say it, back to Bellhaven. Cole now near side. Looking for something in the middle of the field. There's Cruz with an opportunity and a little bit of time and space, but not able to bring it down. Now played back off to Metz. He'll look to have a swing and an opportunity there on the far sideline, but not high enough to get over the head of Logan Gumbert that time. Bill Haven really putting the pressure on at the moment. They're, uh, they're wanting to get that goal back. They don't, want, they don't want it to blow out this early in the game, that's for sure. And here they are. Bellhaven trying to pull one back here, an opportunity, but headed out of play. No, not quite out of play. Still remaining in the box. Ooh. Opportunity, a flying 
Scissor, oppor- I guess that was what, that's what he was going with here. The <laughs> opportunity from Benton. Uh, took a flail at it. Uh, wasn't doing anything, no. Looks a little bit more promising from Bellhaven. They're, uh, they're getting a few more bodies around the box, putting John Dodson under a little bit more pressure. Joel, I wasn't w- quite sure what to term that, that, uh, that uh, the attempt from uh, Benton there. <laughs> Sounded pretty good to me. Yeah. <laughs> Some sort of scissor bike uh, looked more just like, hey, jump at the ball, we'll have a chance. <laughs> looks something more like out of a Jackie Chan movie. Opportunity here. Trying to develop something to get that second goal on the board. Look for Zapata again. Seems like uh, we might start to see a little bit of, bit of fatigue, though, setting in here for uh, when you say, Joel. Yeah, the game's definitely slowed down from the first opening minutes. Of course, these teams both playing last night. Bellhaven within 24 hours. Uh, really, both of them within 24 hours. Uh, but Bellhaven played the late game last night and that lost Indiana Wesleyan. Here comes one-on-one opportunity for Zapata. A lot of pace battling against Simmons. Pull looking ball. for somebody across. He was looking for Vieira in the middle of the field. But a little bit of miscommunication, and here come the Blazers. This will be Cruz. Battling against Cesar Lopez. Vieira. Looking for Zapata. But not much done to it. And... It'll be held on to by Bellhaven's David Cole in the back. Looks like Bellhaven have tightened things up at the back from that early mishap that they had. They're, uh, they're looking a little bit stronger in defense, getting Gavin on the ball nice and early again. Looked like a little bit of a quick hook for Kamathi Kambutho, the sophomore of Nairobi, Kenya. Here comes Metz, an opportunity maybe here for the Blazers. Tried to switch fields with it, looking for Victor Lawrence that time, but taken away by the Black Shirts. Logan Gumbert really has done an excellent job on that left back position thus far. The, one of the few Ohio natives on this Rio Grande Red Storm ball club. It's always good to see a, a local boy getting a run for Rio. They're, uh, they're known for bringing in their foreign players. But, uh, you know, every now and then there'll be a, a quality player that'll come out of the, the area around Rio, and it looks like they've got one here. A couple of uh, new men on, on top of the formation here for Rio. Zapata will take a seat as Luis Filio and William Paulino, the two Brazilians, will enter the ball game here for Rio. Looks like a little bit of a change here for, uh, for Rio Joel as they'll play two men on top. Here comes Paulino. Yeah, it looks like they've changed the entire front line for Rio. They brought Craig Davies out there on the left. Um, They've got big booyah in the middle of the park here, so it'll be, it'll be interesting to see if they get the ball in the box to him a little bit more. It's a little, little bit different um, having um, the big Brazilian up top as opposed to uh, Zapata, so we'll see how they, their game changes a little bit. Filio, of course, might be a guy to key in on for this ball, clu- uh, for this ball club while, he is, while he's in here. A guy that you seem to be pretty familiar with. Sorry, who was that? Uh, F- Filio. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I know it was booyah. He's... Uh, He's a big Brazilian boy. He, he, he puts his body about, and he likes to get on the ball nice and early and use his feet too. So he's, uh, he's going to be one definitely to look out for. They've just brought Craig Davies, as I mentioned, out on the left. He'll be looking to get the ball down into those corner pockets and deliver some quality balls into the box. Davies, of course, the senior, the five foot eight senior from Wolverhampton, England. A little bit of an opportunity for Bellhaven there, a run on, but shielded away. Did Dodson as that one rolled out for a goal kick, and he'll boot this one away. Middle of the field, it'll be brought down by the big Brazilian, or he'll try to battle for it, using that size against the skipper for Bellhaven, and he'll be whistled. Filio getting some early play, battling in there, trying to use that big body of his against Tom Gavin. Looks like Rye is sitting in at the moment. They're letting, uh, letting Bellhaven come at them, so... You know, they're going to try and uh, to block up those holes and not let those passes into their strikers. And it looks like they're doing it so far pretty well. First time that we've seen Will Mansour Good in the ball game here for Bellhaven. He is one of the school's all-time leading goal scorers for Bellhaven, the, re- the reigning national champions. Of course, he, you would think, Joe, he saw a significant run last night in that loss. 
and uh, got a little bit of a rest here early. Yeah, it looks like the, the way the Bellhaven's playing, they, they utilize their strikers as uh, getting on the ball and, and running at defenders. Oh, I'm sure he's got some tired legs, but uh, when it comes to a situation like this where they're 1-0 down, they can't take any chances. They've got to get their best players on the field. Here's Mansoor. He'll look to play one-on-one -on -one to swing something in. Now back off this time to Sanchez. Also a new man in the ball game, the Ecuadorian international. Here comes back the other way, though, here for Rio Grant. Vieira. He'll play back this time, looking down the near sideline for Paulino. And he'll bounce out of play. Paulino uh, quite, uh, quite fired up, quite vocal on the field right now. He's not happy with uh, someone else in a black shirt on the field. Hey, he doesn't look happy at all. Maybe a little <laughs> bit of miscommunication. He wanted the ball to his feet, and it was played over the top. Uh, those things happen. Looking for Filio here to play off to Paulino. But excellently cleared away, but we'll get a whistle for dangerous play, it looks like, here on Simmons. And about here we have a set-piece opportunity here for Ryle. Yeah, about 20 yards out. We'll see who can get, get on the ball here, whether or not they it might be a little bit too far for a direct shot. Craig Davies is on the ball right now. Uh, he'll be looking to swing that ball in. Davies will take this one, as we said, from about, call it... Maybe about 22, 23 yards out. Yeah, a little bit further. There. Look to take this one and swing it in here for the men lined up. Look for Filio, the big Brazilian. And also maybe a, a man to keep an, keep an eye on, Terjan, the six foot two defender out of France. Maybe Filio back post and nothing doing that. No, I think that's what he was looking for, trying to get him on the ball on the, at the back post. He just couldn't direct it back towards goal. Uh, he had a few players running into the middle of the box, but uh, just couldn't, just didn't, the, the lines didn't cross properly there. Very well taken, though, by Craig Davies. Yeah, he's got a, he's got a quality left foot. He, he does. He hits the ball very sweetly. Uh, he'll be looking to get on most of the free kicks, I believe. Goal kick opportunity. Bellhaven will look to continue to apply the pressure as they have done all game, just to reset the game here for you. Bellhaven has held possession for most of this ball game, but Rio coming in that quick strike from Zapata on a counter. Looking for an obstruction call that time was Davies, but no opportunity, no whistle from the referee. I think Davies overplayed that one a little bit. Ref did well to let that one go. But still unrelenting is Rio, looking to add a second. Turjan here near side. Off to Vieira. He's got time and space in the middle. Look to play inside, but well done to take it away by Cole. Possibly here comes an opportunity. Sanchez, Mansoor down the near sideline. Break the, opportunity for Bellhaven. The man from Louisiana will look to battle against Rio, but no opportunity. Sanchez <laughs> with a... With a class touch there to get that one over to another new face in the ballgame, Nas Nas Nasser Sharif. Subs from both teams have definitely uh, breathed a little bit of life into, into this game uh, since they've come on. The, the game has definitely livened up a little bit. Both coaches mentioned before the game their uh, willingness to go deep into their benches here. Uh, with the A, the heat today, and B, of course, uh, can't forget um, last night, playing last night at, for many of these teams up until, or not for many, but we'll say for Bellhaven. Uh, playing until 9.30, 10 o'clock last night and then turning around and having to be up for training uh, early this morning. With this heat, both teams are, uh, are definitely going to have to, to use the, the interchanges wisely, get, get those players with the, with the tired legs off the field and bring some players on. Both teams have got a lot of depth, so I can't see that being a huge issue for either team. Certainly you would think, uh, Joel, for two teams like this that you hear of year in and year out in the NAIA landscape. Bellhaven, of course, the returning national champions, two-time national champions. Rio, a program that you are all too familiar with, uh, former All-American for the Red Storm. You know, uh, com coming into a game at, as number one as Bellhaven are here, you know, everyone's going to be out to beat them. Everyone wants to beat the number one team in the country. Sanchez with an opportunity here. Will shield away. Look for an opportunity to swing it in. Battling against DeMello. Played it back out on top of the 18. This will be the skipper. Across well to Cole. Switch of fields. Inside Mansour, one, two pass. That time looking for Cole, but taken away. Well done by Vieira. Bell having a building play very nicely at the moment. They're just one pass away from a strike on goal. Filio applying pressure. 
as Bellhaven will go all the way to the back to reset. Simmons now. Well, and well, well done. Well taken away that time. Here comes Paulino. Looking to work with his countryman, Filio. Scott Morrissey before the game mentioned that Paulino is definitely a, a player to watch for Rio. I don't know too much about him, but from what I've seen so far, he looks like a lively character. He'll possess right here, wearing that number 10 shirt, of course, for Rio. Here comes an opportunity for Filio. Not well handled exactly by Carl Blundell, but no harm, no foul. <laughs> and back the other way, here comes Bellhaven. Once again, Bellhaven building play very nicely out of the back. Like we said, a few new men into the ball game here for Bellhaven. Nasser Sharif playing in that midfield role. And also, Shillian Thompson, the sophomore from Ireland. But still a man that has not seen a bit of the bench yet tonight, Tom Gavin. Wearing that armband and calling the shots. Not happy with Bellhaven. And here comes an opportunity for Paulinho. Bellhaven are, are pushing a lot of plays forward. And that's, uh, that's been their downfall for that early goal. And, and it looks like they haven't changed their, their stance on that. They're looking to get players up and into the box. They're trying to release those wide players. Uh, you know, hopefully they can get a couple more shots on goal. Joel, wouldn't you possibly say that, especially for a team that's missing their top two choices at center back. A uh, little bit of a risky decision, I guess you would say, uh, for Brian McMahon and Bellhaven. Yeah, it's always tough to lose your two center halves. No one wants to, no one wants to lose their backbone of defense. Um, and that may, have been, that may have been a little bit of uh, inexperience for the, for, for the big man at the back there to allow the Zabata in behind him, but I'm sure he's shaking it off now and things are going to be tight from now on. Bellhaven still looking to pull one back. Mansoor in the ball game. Keep an eye on him. Number 20. The red hair in the center of the formation. The top of the formation for Bellhaven. The Blazers. The reigning national champions. Sharif. Far sideline. Battling against the native Ohioan. In Logan Gumbert. Throw in coming here for Eduardo Cruz. Kusevich entering the ball game here for Bellhaven. He'll be wearing number four. It's here comes an opportunity for the Blazers. But Mansoor couldn't quite get to that one in time before it was cleared out. No problems by the Red Storm. Out of play. And uh, like we said, Joel, we've mentioned this the entire game. Bellhaven really keeping it in the just outside their offensive third for most of this game. But every so often we see those really uh, bigger opportunities come for, uh, for Rio out of those with those counters that we've seen. Yeah, the majority of the play has been played in Rio's half. Um, they'll have a building play extremely well, down, down the right-hand side especially. Um, but Rio just, they're taking advantage of their quick break. They've got a couple of quick plays in, in, in their team and they're, they're using that to their advantage. Rio certainly, just to remind you, the early goal by Zapata. Has us 1-0 here in Marion, Indiana. Wildcat Field. Torbo Sports. National game of the week between the number one and number nine programs in the country. Last year's national champions in Bellhaven. Taking a loss to the chin last night from homestanding Indiana Wesleyan in front of 3,000. How do you respond when you're backed up into a corner for this young ball club? It's a good test for them. You know, they're number one in the country for a reason, like I mentioned earlier. Um, I don't think they're panicking too much too early. It's still a lot of football to be played today. New man into the ball game for Bellhaven is Andrew West playing along the far sideline from Scotland. He is just a sophomore. Excellent challenge there taken away by another new face here for Bellhaven as we try to keep you updated. Johnny Say, a senior from Monroe, Louisiana. Nice international flavor to this Bellhaven team and also a little bit of a Cajun flavor. <laughs> the Louisiana boys, of course, up top, Mansoor. We mentioned uh, Say and also a couple other guys wearing the uh, repping Louisiana on this roster. 
play coming. Excellent challenge that time for Sharif along the far sideline. And here comes Kusevich, the freshman from Santiago, Chile. Simmons in the back. Simmons has really done an excellent job replacing uh, the sophomore Kambutho after that early goal by him. Battling in the middle of the field here is the big Brazilian Filho. Played all the way back to Turjan. Here's Paulino. Battling, using the body. Two black shirts around it. Not much space. And looks like we'll have a whistle here for the push off on Paulino. Yeah, Bell having a little bit of a break in play here. Uh, they put under quite a bit of pressure by Raya. They want to get the ball down again. Uh, they were doing quite well when they were getting uh, their midfielders on the ball. The defenders aren't afraid to bring the ball up either. So Bell having trying to get the swing of the play again. You'd say uh, you can definitely tell um, these two teams played a game last night, it seems like. Oh, you can definitely see. Uh, the game's not flowing as, as well as either team would like. Um, uh, quite a few breaks in play. It's a little bit scrappy, but... Uh, Terjan, here comes an opportunity for Paulinho. Played in for far post and couldn't quite get there was Filio. Tough angle to take a strike there. I believe that was a strike on goal. It could have been a cross, but it looked like a strike to me. It was a tough angle. Don't forget you can purchase a video download of any of our contests this fall during our Fall Game of the Week series by heading to our website at www.torbosportsgroup.com. Make the order and Torbo Sports will send you an email to a, a download link where you can order the game in, fulls, in full for yours to keep forever. Back to the action here. Rio Grande 1, Bellhaven 0. The early goal for the Colombian international. Of course, Orlando Zapata, the senior. Medellin, Colombia. With an excellent one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Belhaven looking to pull one back here before half. Once again, the plays in uh, Raya's defensive third. Belhaven looking to build something here. Kusevich with plenty of time and space. Challenged by Tanagawa. A man whose name we haven't said that much in this ball game, but has been a stalwart in that holding midfield position for Rio, really. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with the way he plays. He, uh, he's not a flashy player. He likes to get the ball down and just, you know, keep, keep the game moving, which is exactly what Rio need with, with they've got the quick players up top. So he's doing well. Here's Filio with an opportunity. Challenged by Simmons, who has been excellent so far since he's into the ball game. Vieira, an opportunity. Brought into the middle of the box, looking to lay it off to Filio. But taken away, no problems. An excellent challenge that time by Kusevic. And a foul on the near sideline, and it will stay with Rayo. That was a tough call uh, for Rayo to get that one. I thought Bellhaven were going to be able to take that ball out cleanly. It didn't look like that was the case, though. Here's an opportunity once again. It looks like we will see Craig Davies take this end swinger another opportunity. Another set-piece chance here for the Red Storm. Hand up. We'll take it short. Look for Vieira. Top of the box. Chip in. Look to flick on the header. An opportunity will bounce all the way out and reset here for Paulinho. Inside. Looking for DeMello. Bit of last-ditch defending from Belhaven. They're not, they're not going to let another goal in easily. They're going to they're gonna block up all those holes, and they did that quite well just then. Belhaven certainly packing it in. We'll have a stoppage of play, and maybe... Looks like we'll see a maybe a little bit of an injury stoppage or an equipment check on Paulinho here. Looks like he'll have to exit the ball game for a moment. As entering for Rio will be the sophomore from Saline, Michigan, Edward Moosey. Trying to see what they're checking out on Paulinho, if it's an issue with spikes or... Looks like some sort of equipment issue, Joel. Yeah, I'm, I'm not exactly sure why he's gone off. He was doing quite well. Looks like they're having to change something out, whether it's need to get something taped up or something fixed. We'll like to hopefully see him back on the field for the Red Storm shortly because he has been impressive thus far for Ryo. Here comes Bellhaven looking to pull one back. 
Bellhaven again trying to release their wide players out on that right touchline. In this time again to Kusevich. The man from Santiago, Chile. But no problems. Knocked off the ball by DeMello. DeMello has been a stalwart in the back this entire game. Yeah, I don't know too much about DeMello, but he has been very solid at the back for Raya. And really, as has on the other side, we just mentioned a minute ago, Simmons for, Simmons for Bellhaven since he came in, the, in that ball game after the early goal was given up. Yeah, he, he's definitely tightened things up at the back for them. And then, of course, remaining in the game was, game was Brombat, moving over from the right back position to the other center back position. Here's an opportunity coming from West down the sideline. He's made a few of those wraparound runs, looking to use his pace down the sideline. Yeah, the ball hasn't, just, hasn't fallen for him just yet, but he, it looks like he's going to keep making those runs until he gets one at his feet. Throw in this time, coming from another new face into the ball game for Rio. This will be Nikoi Wallace, the senior from Montego Bay, Jamaica, another one of your former teammates. Yeah, he, he came in just as I was leaving. I got to train with him a few times. He's definitely a physical player, a player that likes to put his body about. Paulinho is back in now. And it looks like, of course, as soon as we mention his name, Paulinho will re-enter for him. Bellhaven that time, a poor touch and a un, really an uncharacteristic touch for Will Mansour, who is really, you would think, a, a senior leader, the goal scorer for this team, the, uh, the guy that was really the guy for them on that national championship run last year. Yeah, from what I've heard about him, he's, uh, he's definitely one that the other players look up to. He's, he's one that wants to get on the ball and make things happen. So far, Sharif. we haven't seen too He'll much of him. He'll look for Mansoor right here, but he's offside. He may be suffering from some tired legs. Certainly, Mansoor does look a little bit gassed. Just that was just a little bit of sloppy play on his, on his, uh, on his behalf, not uh, getting in behind uh, DeMello. Certainly players taking their time to reset off the, off the set pieces and off the dead balls here tonight. Good opportunity for them to get a breather. Got to take the opportunity every time they can. Rio Grand leading Bellhaven. Three minutes to go here. Here comes Paulinho. Good tackle. Sliding challenge. Excellent challenge from Cillian Thompson. Paulinho looked like he was in on goal. That was a brilliant tackle. But Rio Grand still possesses. A shove in the back looked like that time from, certainly from West. Blatant foul. Two hands straight in the back. Bellhaven bench wasn't happy about it, but clearly the coaching staff has to see that one was, uh, that one was a no-brainer. We could see it from this side of the field. <laughs> yeah. Anytime you're going to put, you, you put your hands on a player like that and push him to the ground, you're going to get fouled. Lucky to possibly not even see a card come out that time as the official urges the, uh, the Bellhaven bench uh, back toward their dugout. DeMello will take this one from call at 35. Look to maybe get an opportunity on one of the big guys on the back end of the header. Flick on this time, an opportunity from Paulinho, but brought away. Pretty sure-handed since that early mishap has been Blundell. Bellhaven lucky to get that one away. That could have fallen to Paulinho pretty easily. Uh, they got a toe in there and were able to get it away, but that was a, that was a sticky situation just then. Romain Turjan with an excellent, excellent flick on that time to get it over to Paulinho there. Yep. Filio himself taking on four men from Bellhaven. Flicking over opportunity. Space this time. Shot on goal. Save. Bye. That time from Blundell. Good save from Blundell. Made himself big. Wasn't able to block to any opportunity for Craig to get a, Craig Davies to get a shot on goal. Did extremely well there, the Bellhaven goalkeeper. No one marking Davies down that far side. And he was able to have one one-on-one -on -one opportunity, but not much of an angle to get it past Blundell, and he shut it down. Filio played a nice ball in behind for Craig Davies to run onto in his stride. Uh, just wasn't able to direct that one into the back of the net. Blundell with the big boot in, into this one with just a minute to go here before half. See if Ryo can make one more run to try to make it 2-0 here before halftime. Just looking at both teams right now, they're both looking really, really tired. I, I think uh, halftime can't come soon enough for both teams here. Certainly get some water, get some shade, head, head into the locker rooms and, and regroup. Certainly for Bellhaven, you would think. Um, after a half where they've really possessed quite a bit but just couldn't get it to pay off with any opportunities. Offside flag is up. 
as Bellhaven was looking for Victor France, seeing his first action into this ballgame. And really, a lot of regulars for Bellhaven we haven't seen a lot of in this ballgame, Victor France being one of them. Yeah, yeah, this is, this is a game, that, like, like we've mentioned before, they're, they're backing up today. They're going to have to use their players, and it looks like they're doing that. They're, they're going to the bench and bringing players on that may not necessarily have played all that much in the past, but, uh, you know, it's, it's one of those things. When you play back-to-back, -back, you're going to have to use everyone. Look like we do have a clock stoppage right here as a player is down, with, uh, down for Ryo trying to get an identification on who that would be, and it looked like it might be Craig Davies over there. I'm not exactly sure what happened there. Uh, there was a clash between Bellhaven defender, maybe West, but uh, Craig was on the ground. He made a big noise. I'm, I'm not exactly sure what happened there. Looked like it might have been a, might have been a cramp or a, some sort of a lower leg as he'll just step off here for a second and looks like he'll immediately re-enter. So nothing too bad for Davies that he can't shake off and re-enter here for the second half or re-enter at the next ball stoppage. Bellhaven will look to make an opportunity, but no, taken away by Turgeon. Here's an opportunity. 15 seconds here coming on for Ryo. They'll hold near the sideline. Back to Turgeon. Played down here, Filio. He'll turn on it. Eight seconds. Seven seconds. Filio swung inside. And that will be the end of the first half here from Wildcat Field in Marion, Indiana. The score, Ryo Grand, the Red Storm, one. Bellhaven, zero. This is the 2013 Torbo Sports National in Soccer Game of the Week on NSCAA TV. Each year, the NSCAA puts over 7,000 coaches through our coaching education program. Youth, high school, and college coaches at all levels participate in the diploma courses. Join your peers and get educated. Better coaching, better players, better game. NSCAA Coaching Academy, improving soccer, one coach at a time. Register today at nscaa.com slash education. Tra la la tra la tra la Blender. to meet your individual needs can be challenging. As the nation's only combined private university and public community college, Rio Grande allows students to minimize costs while gaining a global education. Students enjoy the personal attention of a passionate faculty at a 15 to 1 ratio with more than 60 academic programs. So why not choose an institution as unique as you? You're one of a kind. So are we. Finding the Welcome back, Wildcat Field here in Marion, Indiana. This is the Torbo Sports National Men's Soccer Game of the Week on NSCAA TV. At halftime, the Rio Grande Red Storm 1, Bellhaven 0. I'm Kyle Robbins alongside Joel Tyson, the former Rio Grande All-American. And Joel, the assessment from your end of, we'll start with your alma mater, Rio Grande, in the first half. Of course, to recap, an excellent uh, an excellent one-on-one -on -one opportunity converted by Orlando Zapata there early on in the first half to give them the 1-0 Yeah, it was a, it was a break in play. Bellhaven were definitely uh, the early early team to get on the ball and direct the direct where they wanted to go with the ball, uh, getting their midfielders on it nice and early, getting out to the wide players. Uh, Rio Grande were just fortunate to be able to release Orlando Zapata over the top. Uh, a nice ball in behind for him to run onto. He took one really nice touch past the goalkeeper and was able to slot it. To be fair though, Bellhaven have had the majority of the play. Uh, that's one thing that I'm sure they're going to try and um, use to, to get some more shots on goal. On the, on the other end of it, you just mentioned Bellhaven. If you are head coach Brian McMahon, what do you say at halftime to you've, you, you just went through a tough loss yesterday. You're down 1-0 now, now here at half. You're the defending national champions. You're the number one team in the country. What do you say to your troops in the locker room to get them up for the second half? Well, you, you don't want them to pa panic. You want them to uh, stay, 
stay basically to game plan, direct the play, get the ball down, uh, and they were doing that quite well. Uh, the only problem with them is that they weren't able to produce any goals. They were, they were getting the ball into the right areas, but the final pass just wasn't coming for them. Actually, Brian McMahon, we were able to speak with him before the game, and that was some of the things that we talked about, about how they would adapt to playing back-to-back -back games, especially in this heat, and we spoke to him before the game. Kyle Robbins here with the head coach of the Bellhaven uh, Ball Club here, Brian McMahon. Uh, coach McMahon, a quick turnaround from last night's loss against Indiana Wesleyan. Uh, what do you say to your team, and also how do you uh, develop over the course of the week in training uh, to prepare for a quick turnaround in ball games like this? Sure. Well, the first thing I should do is give credit to Indiana Wesleyan. Uh, fantastic environment here. I think they said maybe it was their largest crowd ever, maybe over 3,000 fans. But it was uh, that caused us a lot of problems, and uh, and credit to them. And, and um, uh, you know, the challenge for us is is the early part of the schedule has been very difficult for us. You know, I, I think with playing Lindsay, playing Ashford, Indiana Wesley, and now of course Ryle, four teams, four games in a row with national uh, national rankings. So I think the thing for us is is really trying to focus on what we're trying to do. Every opponent obviously is very good at this point. And uh, so the thing that we need to focus on is just getting better every day and, and of course, learning from, uh, from things and, and the, the fantastic opposition that we faced. Tactically on this afternoon, what will we see from you all, your side, uh, on the pitch this afternoon? What are, your, what are going to be your points of emphasis for your side? Well, I think if you look at uh, you know, the field conditions in general, it's 120 by 80, which is a max dimension field. And, uh, and so the heat obviously plays a factor. The second game, uh, we played the late game last night and now the early game today. Uh, so if we look at Ryle, they've had a little bit more rest. So I think, I think sustaining the pressure that Ryle Grand will put on us early uh, is going to be a key factor for us. They're obviously a fantastic team. So for us, I think we need to absorb a little bit of that pressure and then hopefully find a way in the second half to go a little deep into our bench. And, and ultimately, I think the bench is going to be the difference between the wins or, or losses today. You mentioned that Rio Grand Ball Club that you'll be uh, matching up against today. What do you see tactically from them? I don't know if you got a chance to uh, watch them before your game last night, being the second part of that. But what have you seen out of them that you're going to see from them on the pitch tonight? Sure. Well, I, I know Coach Morrissey Scott is a, a friend of mine, and, and he's a fantastic coach. So Rio's program just in general is, is a great opportunity for us to see uh, who we know is going to be a national contender every year. Uh, so watching them yesterday, they certainly were impressed. I felt as the game went on, they got stronger. Uh, I know they conceded an early goal and then tied it up late and then, then had a good, uh, fantastic game winner. So I think the thing that, that they have is, is um, a very experienced uh, uh, a ball club. It's, it's some new players, but in terms of age and experience of the game itself. And uh, they make very smart tactically decisions on the field. Uh, it would be uncharacteristic for them to turn the ball over or or just kind of give away, you know, give away a game to you. So I think for us, it's going to be a very difficult challenge to try to break them down because they're they're very attack-minded. They serve a lot of balls in the box, and uh, if we don't attack the ball well today on the crosses and deliveries, we'll 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 pay for it. That was Bellhaven head coach Brian McMahon. The other guy in the other dugout, Joel. Of course, you're very familiar with you familiar with you've been in those locker rooms at halftime if you're Scott Morrissey what do you say to your troops or what is from your experience what's he going to say being up on the number one team in the country at halftime well first of all he's not going to be happy with one goal he's, he's, he's a perfectionist Scotty he's uh or coach Morrissey sorry but he's gonna he's gonna want them to come out and play exactly how they play that half but with a little bit more intensity they want they want to release their strikers they want to get the ball into the box they want to get on the end of things that's the way they play of course, we were also able to speak with him before the game as well. And here's what he had to say to us about this Bellhaven Ball Club. Kyle Robbins here with the head coach of the Rio Grande side, Scott Morrissey. Scott, quick turnaround after last night's game here. Not too much time to prepare tactically for Bellhaven. Uh, what, do you, what did you talk to your guys about? How did you guys prepare for this two-game set? Well, the, the, the two-game set for us is we really get through day one to try to get to day two. And... Really, our preparation and focus, you know, as we prepared for our training all week, was to, to focus on Davenport and then, you know, scout Bellhaven last night. So we've had very, very little preparation other than scouting report and talking to the guys about Bellhaven and, you know, what they brought to the table last night in their match with Indiana Wesleyan. So it's very difficult when you play back-to-back -to, -back to, to prepare your team for day two. 
and if you if you not focus on day one, then you could get caught. So we just focused on on Davenport, and here we are today. For your side tonight, uh, what will you focus on tactically? What did you tell your guys in the locker room? What will you tell them before the guys? What will be your points of emphasis? Well, points of emphasis now uh, in, in day two, knowing that we went to double overtime yesterday, is we got to manage the game, and we've got to. You know, we, we've got to try and have some cover for players. We've got to get some guys some rest because I can't expect my guys to go out and play another full 90 minutes without any subs. So we talked about defensive shape and keeping, you know, keeping a good shape about us and, and, you know, knowing where we should be pressuring on the field because we're playing on a pitch 80 wide. So, Bellhaven, having a chance to watch them last night against Indiana Wesleyan. What do you see in their, in their side that you'll be – concerned about maybe tonight what do they put on the table biggest biggest concerns for me is I think they've got great pace in the wide areas uh, very very good uh, individual players in the wide area uh, their target player up top he's a workhorse uh, good pace really creates a lot and then their midfield three is very very good so I mean we will have our hands full for sure I mean we've got to be very very sharp in all those areas if we expect to get a result each year, the NSCAA puts over 7,000 coaches through our coaching education program. Youth, high school, and college coaches at all levels participate in the diploma courses. Join your peers and get educated. Better coaching, better players, better game. NSCAA Coaching Academy. Improving soccer, one coach at a time. Register today at nscaa.com education. college or university to meet your individual needs can be challenging. As the nation's only combined private university and public community college, Rio Grande allows students to minimize costs while gaining a global education. Students enjoy the personal attention of a passionate faculty at a 15 to 1 ratio with more than 60 academic programs. So why not choose an institution as unique as you? You're one of a kind. So are we. Finding the right college or you.
Back with you, second half here of the 2013 Torbo National Men's Soccer Game of the Week on NSCAA TV. I'm Kyle Robbins. Alongside here, Joel, my uh, partner, the former Rio Grande All-American, of course, back to call, uh, call your game here for, the, uh, for your alma mater. Uh, of course, just want to remind you, of our hotel sponsor tonight, the College Inn, is a five-room bed and breakfast located just steps from Indiana Wesleyan University and across the street from the College Wesleyan Church. Jack Gardner is the founder of the College Inn Bed and Breakfast and has tailored this old house to maximize comfort. Gets will discover features five distinct rooms, cleverly creating an upscale, upscale boutique hotel atmosphere without sacrificing the charming charm and appeal of an intimate inn and a location close to all the action at Indiana Wesleyan University. College Inn is the area's most comfortable and convenient place to stay while visiting Indiana Wesleyan University. Back ready here. Team's refreshed here for some second half action here, Joel. And certainly, let's see if Bellhaven might be able to pull one back here in this ballgame. Yeah, they'll be looking to, to possibly get one in nice and early, get the game back to, back to an even score. Um, you know, they, they, they don't like being behind. You can already tell that. They come out, they're all, they're all blazing, they're firing, so they're ready to go. Bellhaven with many of the guys that started this game back in. Big collision over there on that far sideline with looks like Metz and as well, and on that would be Terjan. Maybe a set piece opportunity might be what Bellhaven needs, and we really haven't seen them get into that many of those thus far. No, it's surprising to me. They've got some big boys, so uh, I'm sure they'll be looking to, to get on the end of this, this ball right here. McCabe will look to take this one. End swinger coming here. About 12, six yards in, flick on, and just cleared off the line. Still an opportunity. Can it be put away? No. Definitely a missed opportunity wow. there. Definitely a missed opportunity. They should have, should have done better there, that's for sure. Bellhaven, that ball bounced around, bounced around. Ryle did poorly being unable to clear that one off the line, and Bellhaven can't, unable to take advantage of the opportunity, and... The Red Storm out unscathed. Yeah, some nervy defending early on here. See how fatigue plays a factor here in the second half for these teams. Cooled off a little bit. Clouds starting to roll in a bit. Maybe that will bring a little more life to the feet. David Cole back starting the second half. Really a pretty, pretty solid job he did on that, on that fullback position over on the far side here in the first half. He'll play a one-two ball and have an opportunity here right away. Lay this one off to McKay, but he got beat to it. And it's cleared off the back line. Zapata back in play now, the goal scorer. And many of the starters once again battling. Looks like we might see those guys that are the more familiar faces for these sides in, later on in the game. Yeah, I think they're going to take every opportunity to get as much rest as they can after that halftime break. Um, without leaving him too short on the field. Orlando's back on, he, as you can see, he's a part of, sorry. Um, he, he's firing, he's had a little bit of an extra rest. He came, on, he came off with about 10 minutes to go in the first half, so he's, his legs look a little bit fresher. Here's an opportunity for Metz trying to get on the back end of one coming in that time from David Major. Not able to do anything with it though, and it bounces all the way out to Petrobelli. He'll be fouled on that far side by Vieira. I think he may have milked that one a little bit. <laughs> and, you know, at this point, it seems like Bellhaven needs any opportunity they can yeah. to get a little set-piece chance. Definitely. McCabe will take one again and see if Ryle can do a little better job to clear this one off their back line. Hand up. Looks to bring this one in. It'll come in right to the middle of the face of the goal, but it looks like a flag up and... Looks like a foul will be called. A lot of contact that time on John Dodson. He came for it, but he did not collect it. So it looks like we'll take a... I thought they were going to call a foul, actually, on Bellhaven, but no, it will actually be a corner, and we'll have the opportunity here from the other side. And taking this one, it looks like we'll be the captain. It'll be Gavin. Ball coming in. Chance. Opportunity to get back on the end of this one would be major. Oof. Put it toward. Wow. That, that, may, one, was that, the to, <laughs> that one was almost able to just sneak in the, uh, the upper 90 of the goal there. But uh, trying moment there for Ryo. 
Yeah, Raya will not be happy with the way that they've come out after the half time. Maybe, maybe a little bit of a lapse in concentration, but Belhaven are really putting the pressure on. They're moving forward, and they get, you know, and in more opportunities like this, they may be able to sneak one in. Major with a little bit of a wonder goal there, chance to uh, knock that one into the top half, top corner of the goal. Rayo, though, coming with an opportunity here once again. Taking the throw in will be Gumbert, one of the local boys on the team. I believe he's played all, all minutes in this game. He hasn't come off yet. Quite a bit, quite a bit, exactly. Another opportunity here coming from Belhaven. Victor Lawrence will try to maintain possession, but not able to bring it down. And Gumbert will bring in another throw here for Rio as they urge. Looks like uh, Callum Cobb is trying to urge his, his side toward this near sideline. Belhaven aren't letting Rio out of their defensive half here. Craig McCabe will hold in midfield. Now off to Gavin. Back to Major. The Englishman here working in the middle. Back to McCabe, playing nice a little one-two play. ball. Off to Tom Gavin. Switch it in up to it. All of the Englishmen playing here once together. Stringing, stringing that one together with Cole and then Metz before taking away. Ryo just can't seem to get out of their own half at the moment. Ryo almost seeming a little bit of a step slower here in the second half, would you say? Yeah, I'm not sure exactly what's happened at half time, but they don't have the zip at the step that they did going into the half. And a player down as well on the, uh, in the back part of the half. Looks like, I believe... Cesar, Cesar be, Lopez. Uh, yeah, Cesar Lopez. And he'll have to come off. They won't bring anyone on to immediately replace him as he'll re-enter. He doesn't look happy. He, he, may have, he may have copped a little knock as he went down. He'll wait for the official to wave him back on. Throw in opportunity that time. They were looking for the goal scorer Zapata. And he was bodied up. And Ryo finally able to move the ball into their half with this set piece opportunity from way out. I'm expecting them to knock it straight into the box and put Belhaven's defense under a bit of pressure here. They haven't had anything to deal with just yet. So uh, Maxi Vieira, I believe it is, going to take a right-footed cross into the box to try and hit some of their big players. See what Vieira can do with this one. Terjan also getting down in there, the big defender. Down there is Rodriguez. DeMello. Who can get on the end of this one? DeMello going up oh. and just tapped away that time by Blundell. Decent, well done there. Yeah, decent punch from Blundell. He was able to get it out of the danger area quite nicely. Gumbert with a nice touch here. Looking down line this time for Mello. DeMello trying to play it off of a Bellhaven man and couldn't quite just get it over the touch line. Bellhaven will stay and look to clear it away, but just over the line and a throw in coming. They'll look to move quickly here. Into Tanagawa. Now back off to Patrick Patrice Arce. Tanagawa now taken away by, once again, the captain, Tom Gavin, been active all night long. Metz now off to Benton. Metz will have an opportunity again. Two on one. He'll look for Benton to oh. bury it in the back of the net, but poorly played and couldn't quite get there. That's that final pass I've been talking about. The, the final pass is... Hasn't been able to fall for Belhaven just yet. They keep trying, though. That was the opportunity for Belhaven right there. And Mets, wouldn't you, have, wouldn't you almost say there, Joel, that Mets could have put that one on frame? Not maybe the best option, but I guess better than that result. Uh, Dodson closed down the angle pretty well. I think, I think the right opportunity would have been to play it across the, across the box there, but uh, it just wasn't a good enough pass. Belhaven with uh, a couple of unforced errors in this game so far, and there was one that would have been a sitter for Benson. But just couldn't, quick, get, well brought couldn't down. <laughs> quite get on the end of that one. Well done by Cole, as you mentioned, to bring that one down. But Ryo battling on. Cole using that pace to get back and break it up once again. Cole's been active all night long. He has, he has. He's been impressive. Very impressive. One of the few that might have a, a little bit of wind left in him. And, it's, of course, as soon as we mentioned that pace and the activity that he's been involved, he's 
down reaching for a breath. Rio looking to make a move on here. They were looking for, I believe, Zapata that time and also Arche. Once again, Bellhaven's come out and had the majority of the play in this, in this second half here. Uh, they've had a couple of opportunities on goal, so I believe they'll be pretty happy with the way things are going at the moment. Really, as they've done all game. Here comes an opportunity for Victor Lawrence, now laid off. Here's yeah. Metz's opportunity, and go. into the Here's back the of the net. net. Taken Jermaine extremely Metz well. Metz has been pretty active all, all game long, and finally getting the opportunity to rectify for that the opportunity that was just missed a moment ago. Yeah, he's made up for it. Uh, yeah, he's done extremely well to get back into the box and slot that one nicely into the far corner. Um, Rayo just fell asleep at the back there. I don't know exactly what happened, but uh, taken extremely well by Bellhaven. Good goal. Jermaine Metz, the man, the sophomore from Manchester, England, tying it up here for the Bellhaven Blazers. And all of a sudden, who's got more left in the tank after a long weekend? We've got a ball game here from Marion, Indiana. Strap in, buckle up, 36 minutes to go. Second half here. This is the 2013 Torbo National Men's Soccer Game of the Week. And you can feel that energy coming with Bellhaven, and they've got a little bit of the momentum here, it feels like. Bell as David Cole coming in with that sliding challenge. A little bit more activity on that Bellhaven bench. Oh, yeah, you can tell. Bellhaven are all on their feet. They're supporting their, their team, right? They're looking a little bit tired at the moment. Uh, Bellhaven have come out from the second half break, uh, from the halftime break, and have really, really. Put it to Rio. Let's see how they can uh, react to that. Now the score is 1-1. How do they respond? DeMello here looking for a long goal. Long ball here looking for Zapata. Whistle coming. And they'll say that Zapata was offside. Really a late flag that time going up. But looked like Zapata wasn't been going to be able to get to that one anyway. Here's Tom Gavin. The man that's been anchoring this side for the entire night. Back laid off to Simmons, now back to Gavin, back to Simmons. Middle of the field, Victor Lawrence. Laid off now to McCabe. For me, Gavin and uh, Metz have been the two, two players I've really liked for, for Bellhaven. They've both been really busy getting on the ball, making things happen for Bellhaven. And, and you know, that's uh, the result they got just then with the goal is, is fair play to both of them. Certainly have been active all night long. Here comes an opportunity here for Ryo. Arche. Played over this time, was looking for Tanagawa, but picked off. Here comes picking up on it once again is Callum Cobb. Shot coming on, but that one's well wide. He struck that from about 25 yards out. Never really looked like he got a hold of it. Didn't get all of that one, certainly. And don't forget, you can purchase a video download of any contest of this fall's Game of the Week series by heading to our website at www.torbosportsgroup.com. Make the order and Torbo Sports will send you an email with a link to download the game in full for yours to keep forever. Certainly will want to get a hold of this game, which looks like it might be a classic setting up between two traditional powerhouses in the NAIA. Opportunity coming in here for Vieira, trying to get on the back of... On the back of that one was Arche. Here comes the other goal scorer, Metz. Metz running out defenders here. He's, he's causing troubles. He's doing well. Metz certainly very active. Guy with a lot of pace as well here for Bellhaven. But Vieira brings it away. And finally a whistle, though, on Metz. Maybe a little bit of frustration yeah. in there in the midfield for Rio. Uh, Vieira just leaving his foot in with that tackle. Ryo, though, will maintain possession. DeMello playing the point here from the defense. Laid off, and that one taken away. Well played away by David Major. Ball out into touch, and it'll be another throw in here for Bellhaven. Bellhaven got plenty of space in the middle of the park here. Ryo just letting them come at him. Here comes Cole trying to track down this one to keep it in play. Turn it upfield. And that one's out of play. Once again, we'll remain with Bellhaven. Really seems like this game is, and certainly, it's up for grabs on the scoreboard, but as well up for grabs in terms of who's going to grab hold with the possession, where are we going to play the majority of this second half. 
very much been in the middle of the field so far. It has. It's been it's been end to end with the majority of the play being played right in the middle of the park here. Uh, Belhaven has still got the majority of the, the possession, I believe, but you know, Raya won't be happy with that. They won't settle for that. Not so much though like the first half is where Belhaven was really playing down in the half of of Raya. Mermetz, Metz though here with an opportunity. Oh, he's split the defenders. Well done. Opportunity coming. He'll try to lay this one off for Benson, but couldn't get it through. Demello was there. Good bit of play by Metz there, being able to split the two defenders straight through the middle there. Just wasn't able to get the ball into the middle there. Metz has certainly been the uh, been the player of this second half, you would say, for both squads either. Yeah, he's he's come out. He he wants to win this, you know. Uh, Number one, number one team in the country. They're not going to settle for a, for a one nil loss after they had a defeat last night. They they they're out to win this one. They don't want to tie. And certainly with the with the gas left in the tank for both these teams, and that's certainly a factor when we've talked about it all game long. Who's going to be the guy that might be outside of the normal cast of characters, the normal stars for these for these sides, that might be the one to step up? It's hard to say right now. Um, like we were saying just before, it's it's end to end at the moment. Um, oh. Big collision right here, but no whistle. Taken away by Arche. Big collision between Major and Arche there. The black shirt's coming away with the better of it. Nice touch there by Tanagawa. Back to Vieira. Now all the way back to DeMello. Near sideline coming to Gumbert. And there's Metz once again. Active. One two passing with He's Victor all over Lawrence. the place. Metz is all over the place. He's popped up on the left. He's popped up in the middle yeah. of that goal. And now he's over here on the right hand side. He's he's everywhere. Metz, cer Metz certainly is seems like a guy that's got a little bit more energy than everyone else in the field right now. Maybe he's the guy that uh that drank an extra Gatorade last night or uh, <laughs> or ate his Wheaties. Certainly an op maybe an opportunity here for Bellhaven, but well done by Cesar Lopez to take that one away. DeMello here possessing and looking to get it on. Here comes an opportunity. We thought <laughs> for Zapata, but couldn't quite get, use his pace to get on the end of that one. Offside. Now here comes back the other way. An opportunity would have been for Benton, but he was offside. Yeah, there wasn't much in that one. I uh, didn't see too much daylight between him. But Dodson was off his line nice and quick. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know whether or not he would have been able to get on the end of it, but uh, yeah. How about an, another name to mention here that's been quite active all game long? I don't think he's come out of the game as well. Uh, is Heider DeMello for, uh, for Rio. Yeah, Hol he's holding on that back line. He's, uh, he's been solid. Rio's defense has been, apart from that one little mishap at the, at the start of the second half, they've been pretty solid. Excellent challenge there by Lopez. As he'll look to bring this one down, clear it out again. Not the biggest defender, Lopez, but he no. definitely throws his body around, and uh, he's quite good with his feet as well. So, Little guy not afraid to get in there. And speaking of another little guy not afraid to get in there and battle, was Zapata on that near sideline. He got the best of, I believe, I believe David Cole on that far sideline. Yeah, he's a, that he's, a, he's a tough one, uh, Zapata. He probably weighs about 130 pounds soaking wet, but he, he gets in there. He puts his foot in there whenever he can, and he, you know, he's, he's a wiry character. Certainly, he's a guy that's known for his pace and his touch rather than his, uh, his brute physical strength on the challenges. But there, uh, getting the best of the Bellhaven player on the far sideline. Someone looking to take control on the far side. Finally, Bellhaven will come out with it. And now back the other way for Rio. Little disorganized along the far side here, Joel. Yeah, it's a little bit scrappy over. Ooh, it's a good Here's a chance, middle. though, for Victor Lawrence on the swinging in cross from Will Mansour, but yep. still cleared away, no problem. It's been a little bit scrappy uh, in, in certain areas of the, of the park, but they, that could be down to, to fatigue. These, these boys have got to be tired. They have to be tired. This, this game's being played at a very, very high pace. Certainly. It's been a lot of pace coming off the games last night, of course, to recap for you. Bellhaven falling to Indiana Wesleyan 2-1 to one last night here on the same field. And Rio playing a double overtime game against Davenport University where they would pull that out in a win. Yeah, I'm sure ne neither of these teams want, to, want this game to go into overtime. Uh, th their legs have got to be starting to, to wear down on them underneath them. So you know, they want to get this game out of the way. They want to get it done. They want to get their win. They both want to get on the road. So it, it's a good contest. Delgado Rodriguez down there challenging 
against trying to get a number on who that is on the far sideline. I believe that's David Cole as well. And the foul call will be on Delgado Rodriguez. And back the other way will come Bellhaven, as we'll have a stoppage in play here for Vieira of Rio. I wouldn't be surprised if Rio bring on Paulinho again here pretty soon. Uh, he, was, he was one of their better players in the first half. We haven't seen him yet in this half. Um, be interested to see when he does, does feature in this game. As, as you mentioned, Luis Filio will re-enter the ball game here as Vieira will take a seat. Will be interesting to see if we do see Paulinho back in this game. Looked like a handball there for Rio. I believe Cesar Lopez got a little bit of a piece of that one with his arm. And here come the Blazers looking to tack one more on. Coming across the middle of the field here is Cruz. Looking to play it into Sharif. Not able to do so. Back the other way. Is Ryo. Here comes an opportunity. This is Craig Davies. Here comes a ball in, but nobody can get on the end of it. As you can see, Ryo's players are... Majority of them are back in their own half. The ball, the ball was played down to Craig Davies on the left-hand side, and there was maybe Filio and Zapata around the back, but that's it. They, they need to come up as a team. Filio and Zapata, certainly. This is, I believe, the first time that we've seen them really play together uh, yeah. up top of this formation. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if, uh, if Maxi was still fit to, to play on, if, if Filio would have featured this early in the second half, but uh, you know, a change might mix things up a little bit for Raya. We'll see how these two can play together. The big Brazilian alongside the Colombian. Here's an opportunity for Zapata right there. And he'll be called for the foul. And back the other way, looking to take it quickly, will be Bellhaven. Bellhaven under a little bit of pressure there. They'll be happy to take that free kick and, and take a breather and uh, clear their lines. Both teams really uh, taking advantage of those dead ball situations of these free kicks to collect the breath, collect the, uh, collect the legs underneath them because... You've got to be smart in certainly a, a situation like this playing um, on short rest. Definitely, definitely. The heat, the heat ha although it's dropped down a little bit, the mm -hmm. temperature has dropped a little bit here, here at the, on the field, but uh, it's still quite warm. It's still quite warm. With, uh, with their tired legs, it's not easy to play out there right now. Sharif with a fine touch on that corner, looking for Mansoor, who's been very quiet. The, uh, one of the, and this is one of the leading goal scorers in program history for this Bellhaven club. Not much from him tonight. He'll be looking to get on the ball and you know, grab that winner. He's a big-time player. He's played in a lot of big games, so they'll be looking to him to get on the ball and, and fire something in the back of the net for him. Mansoor, of course, the senior. The American. Shreveport, Louisiana native. One of the stalwarts for this club. Here comes Craig Davies looking to play this one to Zapata. Not able to do anything with it. And it'll be Kusevich to play it just out of play. Ray really looking to lift here. Uh, they haven't come out with uh, the enthusiasm that they went into this, the first half with. So uh, they're, they're trying to get their things together, trying to string some passes and, and get Orlando out in the clear. Really, as this game continues, would you say that this scoreline is more reflective of this, the way this game has been played than it was in the first half? Because really that Ryo goal was quite a bit against the run of play. It was. It was. Bellhaven did have the majority of the possession and the run of play in the first half. Uh, Raya were, I wouldn't say lucky. They took their goal well. They took their opportunity when it arose. That's the sign of a good team. Um, but yeah, definitely 1-1's one a fair, uh, a fair, a fair uh, goal uh, score for, for this game at the fair moment. Fair scoreline, certainly. Yeah. As you can tell, though, a little bit, as, and, and we've mentioned this, and you don't want to keep hitting on it, but the fatigue starting to reflect in play here late, later in the game. Yeah, you can, you can, t you can sense the players are, are starting to get a little, even, even a little bit more tired. Um, they're a little bit frustrated out there. I can see a couple of late challenges, a few sloppy tackles here and there. Um, hopefully they can, they can calm down a little bit and get the ball on the deck and play some football. Losing a little bit of the flow of the game, losing a little bit of that pace that it was played out earlier, the up and down pace, uh, much more choppy uh, in the second half. And realistically, that doesn't suit either team. Right. Both, both teams like to play, and that's what we want to see. A little slow getting this one going here on the restart, on the throw. Johnny Say trying to take this one. One of the other Cajuns on this ball club. 
And that one was headed right off play from a blazer in the white shirt. And here's maybe a chance for Rio. This was kind of – they're starting to – seems like the black shirts get the ball down more inside their box, create a couple more opportunities. Maybe this is the chance here they need. Could be. Could be. Rio just need to collect, collect their thoughts and start playing their, their brand of football. Uh, yep. Bellhaven have done a good – a good job in stopping them linking passes, and, and they've come out and got their early goal. So Rio need to, to lift again and get the ball on the ground and, and start playing. And, of course, as we mentioned, it, Terjan and Rodriguez unable to get together on the throw in, and it comes right back the other way for Bellhaven. Throw in coming down line here looking for Cherie, and he'll take this one. Not going anywhere with, with it in a big boot this time, looking for Filio. And Zapata, they'll look to play two-on-two two here. Here's Filio. He's got an opportunity. Trying to get it out to Craig Davies, who was wide open and unmarked. Once again, it's a big gap in the middle of the park. Rio has spread from, from just inside their defensive third all the way up to the 18-yard box in their attacking half. So there's a lot of space in the middle of the park. Bellhaven are looking to exploit that. Bellhaven looking to move quickly here. Eduardo Cruz playing here one-on-one. -on -one. Down in the near sideline here with Cesar Lopez. Back off this time to DeMello. Then taken away by Bellhaven once again. Reset on top. West here. Inside, Mansoor. Can he get on the end of one? This time will be France. Seeing for the first time a touch inside the box. Swinger. Oh. Not a bad effort oh. there. Not well, a bad what, effort at all. What an opportunity from Victor France. And he'll grab, run his hands through his hair. A laughing a little bit about that when he put a strike on that. He had quite a bit of bend on that one. He was trying to sneak that one into the fast dig. Uh, Dodson, he, he spread himself well. I don't know if he would have got a touch to that, but uh, that could have gone in. Victor France, the junior midfielder from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. Did everything he needed to do there except put it in the back of the net. That was certainly a class, class strike from Victor France. Did every, exact, exactly as you said, did everything right but put it on frame. Cherie with the touch on, battling with Filio. Good ball. Here's an opportunity for Craig Davies. Tried to put it across the frame of the goal, but nobody was on the back end of that one. Looked like he was trying to blast that one, take the goalkeeper in the back of the net with him. Certainly, indeed. Live stream games, rankings, releases, reviews, and more. Join us every Tuesday at 1 p.m. Eastern to tune in for the weekly college highlights and ranking show. There's nothing like this anywhere else. And you, know, you can only see it on NSCAATV.com. Resuming play here, Mansoor working with Cherie. An opportunity here for Bellhaven. Will be a corner coming on. Maybe here's a chance to get the winner. Mansoor looks like he's trying to get himself in the game. He's, he's really trying to get on the ball and make things happen for Bellhaven. Uh, he's had a good quality couple of touches here, and I'm sure the more as the game goes on, he's going to get more and more opportunities, and uh, he's starting to look the goods. Eduardo Cruz will take this one. Into the box will be Cherie Thompson. Also down there is Brambot. This one's coming in toward near post, head of the way, no problems. Back to Cruz. In back once again. A chance for Shillian Thompson. Well defended by Rio, getting the ball out of there when they needed to. Well done again by Rio. Who's the man there using his pace once again? Is Zapata. This one will come all the way up to us in the stands. As Bellhaven will look to restart. Stoppage of play here. Throw in coming here on the near sideline. Looking for Victor France, and the foul will be called on the man from Rio, Craig Davies. Zapata being told audibly to get out of the way there by the <laughs> official. And that'll be a handball on Cherie. We could see that one clearly. Yeah. A few choice words. Uh, between both teams there, Craig Davies, not one to back down. Uh, Orlando Zapata actually coming back and, and backing up his buddy. Uh, but Bellhaven aren't, aren't taking a backward step at all. Certainly not. These are two teams with traditional, traditional powers in the NAIA. 
Kyle Robbins, Joel Tyree here with you. Torbo Sports National Men's Soccer Game of the Week on NSCAA TV. Bellhaven, Rio Grands, tied up 1 1. 17 and a half to go here, second half. I want to thank you to tuning in, for tuning in, here from Marion, Indiana, Wildcat Field. The Wildcats of Indiana Wesleyan hosting this event. There's another late challenge. There's another late challenge. That's and an we'll one. have a stoppage of play. We're going to see a booking right here. Who will it be? Looks like it's going to be Rodriguez. Is that, is that the first yellow card of the game? Is I believe. This is the first booking we will see here with 17 and a half to go on Pau Delgado Rodriguez. The ref's done a pretty good job in letting this game flow. Um, you know, we're into the, deep into the second half and the first yellow card to be shown. That's, uh, that's interesting. The freshman from the Catalan seeing the first yellow of the ball game. The Barcelona native. And here comes the reset for Bellhaven. Looking to tack on the winner, Mansoor, up on top of the formation. Brombot battling over to Cherie. He'll look for Caruz out wide. Down line again to Cherie. Inside, Mansoor's got an opportunity. Inside is Thompson as well. He'll try to swing it inside, but headed out no problems that time. Back in, Cruz. Opportunity, shot on goal, save. Nice bit of footwork there. Who was that with? Uh, I believe that was Eduardo Cruz. Eduardo Cruz, he, he did well. He was going to strike with his right foot, drug it back onto his left, and just didn't have the power needed to, to place it past Dodson. Dodson, as we've mentioned before, has been very solid in this game, sure-handed throughout the throughout this matchup. Davies, working near side. They'll play it to the man that just picked up the booking. This is Rodriguez looking to atone for his mistake. He'll play this one in, but well over the goal. Tough angle for him there. I don't know if he was trying to direct that one back on goal or exactly what he was trying to do there, but uh, maybe the, the better opportunity would have been to bring it back towards the six-yard line. Here comes Kusevich, working along the, near si the far sideline with Shuri. Trying to battle with Filio. And here comes Zapata, the Colombian. Asking for the ball is Craig Davies. And he's a little frustrated that time with Zapata, who had... That was a, that was a hopeful chance from there. Oh, when you're on the edge of the box sometimes like that, you know, yeah, a rush of blood, you just want to strike it. Maybe the better, better opportunity would have been to lay it out to Craig and then get, find your way back into the box. But either way, it was a strike towards goal. I wouldn't say it was on goal, but... It's, uh, it's looking a little bit better for Raya. And Davies, Davies looking at uh, Zapata right now and saying, hey, lay that one off to me next time. Let me have a go. Big boot into this one. A couple of new faces returning to the game for Raya that we'll get to you in just a moment. As Mansoor will challenge here, DeMello. Entering the ball game for Raya. Edward Moosey, one of the... Americans on this Rio side, the Michigan native, as well re-entering, I believe, would be Callum Cobb. Here's Kusevich, trying to get in with West. West was frustrated as they had a little bit of miscommunication there. Davies. Bellhaven just not letting Rio get out of their own half. It's just not happening for him. Davies certainly frustrated with something here with, this, with the assistant on the sideline. Both he and Victor France being told pretty sternly by the official, that's enough. He's a fiery character, Craig. He, uh, he, he wants to, <laughs> he's just out there to win. It's the only thing that's on his mind is win, win, win. So he's, uh, he's giving him his two cents and the refs, you know, obviously got the whistle. So he's the one that's going to win the argument. Certainly the intensity of this ballgame ratcheting up. Mansoor here challenging. The two Americans battling on that far sideline. And it will go with the men in the white shirts. Here comes an opportunity for the number one ranked Blazers to atone for the upset last night. Ball coming in here to Cruz. He'll bring it down the touchline. Couldn't do anything with it brought up by Cobb. Now, here comes Davies. Craig Davies looking to do something with it. Too much on the end of that one. 
He may have been in two minds there. He had Filio out on the right and Orlando making his way out onto the left and he played it straight down the middle. And something to keep an eye on. Craig Davies, active, but also having words with Victor France here back down the sidelines. Uh, might be something to keep an eye on as this game progresses. Here's another opportunity for Kusevich. Now over to Thompson. Cillian Thompson. Played back here. All the way back to Simmons, who has been pretty much a stalwart. And a guy that we haven't seen since that early goal was Kambutho. Oh, that was a hefty challenge. Certainly. And it looks like so. the foul will go on, will be placed on Callum Cobb. That was surprising to me. I thought, uh, I thought Raya was the, the victim in that one, but the ref probably had a better look than I did. Bellhaven uh, really getting the, the, many of the whistles going their way seemingly here in the second half. Here comes West, playing it into Mansoor. He'll look to play on this time to Victor France. Nothing doing. Back the other way for Raya. Here comes Filio looking to work with Zapata. And Simmons just took an elbow to the forehead. We'll see if we see a stoppage of play, but he'll shake it off and play on. Body's starting to go all over the pitch. Everyone's flying in. And we're going to see another card here for that challenge on Mansoor. This will be Cesar, will be Cesar Lopez. Looks like he's going to see at least a yellow, and yes, he will. The referee's just trying to stamp his authority on the game here, making sure that these, these challenges don't get any worse. Certainly. Joel certainly getting feisty at this point, you would say. Oh, I definitely would agree with that. Two teams just looking for the W here and looking to do anything in their power to put their side ahead with 12 minutes to go. Eduardo Cruz will take this one as the official has a talking to with Cherie, telling him to cut it out, whatever he saw. He's standing over the ball like he's going to have a strike. He's a long way out here. Taking a while to get going here as looks like Tanagawa is going to just walk right, up on, walk right up on him. He'll have to be walked off. Guys to keep an eye on in this set piece. Maybe Thompson once again. Mansoor, quiet all night, but he's been the goal scorer for this team. Opportunity coming in here for Cruz, but headed out no problems. Both teams, tonight, uh, both teams tonight have had uh, troubles getting past the first man. The, the balls haven't been going where, they've, where they're, I'm sure they've wanted them to go. Uh, being beaten out at the near stick or at the, the first man in defense. Um, you know, the, the set pieces haven't been all that good for me. Ryo looking to get something going here with just 11.45 11 to go left in this ballgame. Here comes West. Beats the first man. Can't do any more with it. Now Thompson looking for Cherie, but too much on that one. Throw in coming. Filio. And Joel just... It's like we said earlier. This game seeming like... Will we see this one into the draw? No one, not much of anything going forward. As soon as we say it, here comes Cherie in Bellhaven. And once again, it's that last ball. Oh, here's and another challenge. There's a, there's a hefty challenge in the back. Like we said all day, uh, the build-up play has been quite good for both teams, but they just haven't been able to get the ball in the right areas on that last pass for a strike on goal or an easy finish. And we're going to see another booking here. This one's going to be on Johnny Say, and he'll see another yellow. So is that two for Rio and one for Bellhaven right now? Two for Rio, one for Bellhaven indeed. If you're playing along at home, that's Johnny Say, the first for Bellhaven. But two for Rio on Rodriguez and Cesar Lopez, who will take this kick. Lopez. Over to DeMello this time. Challenged by Mansoor. Here near sideline, Arche. And taken away by Victor France. He was looking to play that one forward, but just nobody on the end of that one there. Yeah, no one really read where he was putting the ball there. Getting close to 10 minutes to go, who will strike the winner in this ball game? Blazers, Red Storm, 1-1. Two top 10 national programs meeting on a neutral site. This one is the definition of up for grabs. 
Cherie. France. Chipped on inside Eduardo Cruz. Oh, he's flopped there. He <laughs> fell down. He wanted something. He'll stay down trying to milk that, but uh, not going to get anything from the yellow shirt. Arche. Zapata now, the goal scorer. He'll play this one in for Filio. That's where Filio wants the ball. Back to goal, holding the ball up. How about an opportunity ball. here for Zapata, but that one just out of his reach. I feel like Zapata just wasn't on the same page as Craig Davies then. That was a good ball into the middle of the park. Uh, if Zapata read that a little bit early, he might have a, a pretty clear shot on goal. Certainly that looked like it might have been a chance there. But well played in, a good idea from Craig Davies there. It looks like Rio is starting to build their play a little bit more now. It's, it's taken them a little while to get back into this game, but it looks like they're getting a, a few more opportunities. Here's the play in from Arche. Trying to get on the end of this one. Opportunity for Zapata, but just over his head. Can he turn it back in? Bouncing around. Filio inside the box. Played back out. Finally cleared away. Scrappy defending by Bellhaven. And a handball that time will go on to Mello. Cruz will look to play quickly. Here comes Cherie. Switching fields. France. Looking down the line. Thompson. Cruz. They'll all work together on that far side. Chipped on. Victor France. Leaves it for Cruz. Back over to Thompson. Trying to get something developed. Maybe a chance coming here for Rio. Development for Zapata. He's all up there on his own. There's no one else supporting him. But Brambat able to take that one away. Good tackle by Gumbert. Cherie. Here comes Mansoor. Excellent move to beat the defender. Here's two on two opportunity. Mansoor. Laid off. Shot. Cruz. Oh, goal. And what a just strike. like that, Bellhaven strikes back. 2-1. There's, the, there's that man, Monsieur. We'll say he was getting into the game a little bit more. And uh, he, he got the ball, took it past the right defender, laid it across the box. A really nice ball across the box. And that was a, that was a cracking finish. Eduardo Cruz, who had been very active all game long, with the possible winner here. Eduardo Cruz took that in his stride. He didn't think twice. He was putting his foot straight through that ball. And that's exactly what he did. That was an excellent strike from Eduardo Cruz. But really, if you've got to give it to anybody on that development, it's got to be Mansoor, and you mentioned it. Yeah, he did really well. Uh, it may have been Gumbet that he, he took it past, but, uh, you know, which, which, is, which is harsh on Gumbet. He's, he's been very, very strong at the back there, but uh, you know, that little lack in, lack in concentration, and now they're, uh, they're down a goal. If you thought Bellhaven was dead in the water at halftime, you thought wrong. Eduardo Cruz with the possible game winner. Can Rio, Rio pull one back? Eight minutes to make it happen. Is Metz back on the field? He is. Metz, will, Metz has re the ball game. Jermaine Metz with the first goal for Bellhaven. Back in the ball game. The challenge by Thompson. Official does not like it. Thought we might see a booking there from that challenge from behind, but Cillian Thompson will go away without the booking. And here comes Cesar Lopez up to take the set piece from near half field. 7.30 to go, second half. Lopez will look to drive this one inside the box. Look for Filio. Poor ball. Poorly taken. Cruz. Development coming for Bellhaven. Presti. Down this near sideline. New faces coming in here. The freshman, Beffy. That's a great ball. Great ball over here. Metz with the opportunity. Now maybe Cruz again. Trying to lay it off for Metz. Cruz still battling. Still on his feet. Beats the defender. One more chance. Taken oh. by Beffy. No. Shut down. But here's Presti. Jorge Sergio Presti. Near sideline. Here's an opportunity again for Beffy. Laying off to the captain. And Tom Gavin. But he'll boot that one over the goal. Rio need to get themselves together here and actually rally. Um, they had the free kick in the middle of the park, poorly taken by Cesar Lopez, and then that almost resulted in a goal at their own defensive end. How much does Scott Morrissey's side have left in them after a long weekend? After a double overtime grinder last night. Six minutes to go. 
Big boot coming here from Dodson. And another whistle on Cillian Thompson. Referee's really not letting anything go in the middle of the park at the moment. He's, uh, he's tightened everything up. He's dishing out a few yellow cards here and there. He's not, he's not having any funny business. Coming right back will be Beffy here. Trying to run wild on this one is Bellhaven. Mets down the sideline. The Englishman from Manchester. Maintaining possession in that corner. They're trying to use that clock. Eduardo Cruz. Battling with Beffy and he'll be pulled down. That'll be a foul. That's a tackle from behind. You just can't do that. You just can't do that from behind. And I believe that was Callum Cobb. That's in a dangerous area just outside the 18-yard box. This is, this is an opportunity for a strike on goal. While the confidence is high, why not? Back there looks like Eduardo Cruz, who scored the winner, is back near it. Also surrounding that ball is Tom Gavin. And Lucas Beffy, the freshman from Sao Paulo. If you're guessing, you might think Cruz might put a boot into this one while he's hot. Dodson righties in goal. Cruz takes strike. Oh, off, off the, the post. post. Oh, wow. Eduardo Cruz has been really tremendous in this second half. Not a bad strike at all off the post. Uh, he's, he's definitely playing with a lot of confidence right now. He's the one they want the ball at his feet. Cesar Lopez battling over there with Beffy. And he's not happy at all. Looks like he took a ding to the ankle. That's the best way to describe this game at the moment. This is, this is an absolute battle. Four minutes to go. Dodson will need to put a big boot into this one, try to finally. And, you know, Joel, we haven't seen the ball really in the, in the Rio third at all in the second half. No, they've, got, they've gone a little bit missing up, up top. Uh, they really need to rectify that and get, some, get something going up, up top for them. Uh, Filio's on the ball right uh, up on the field right now. They've got Orlando still out there, Orlando Zapata. Uh, they, need to, they need to utilize these guys. And it's going, to be Bell, it's going to be another Bellhaven opportunity. They just can't seem to get the distribution down off the goal kick. This Rio side. Opportunity coming down line. Looking for Beffy. He'll battle against Cesar Lopez here. Looking to get this one over to Presti. Couldn't do anything with it and taken away. Bellhaven looking to slow the play there. That was a smart foul. Cesar Lopez again. Tick, tick, tick the clock. Inside, 3.20 to go. Cesar Lopez trying to play it all the way down. Couldn't get it there. Arche headed around. Terjan trying to get there. And just nothing able to get going for this Rio side as they continue to push forward. Coach Morrissey will not be happy with the way Rio are playing at the moment. There doesn't seem to be too much direction. Uh, then they're not doing what they, you know, the fundamentals. That's what, they're not executing the fundamentals. Certainly a poor second half outing from Rio here. Beffy with the run toward, toward the corner, trying to keep the play in that half of the field. As the ball is headed around. How much does Rio have left in the tank here? Here comes Zapata. Arche played for here Maybe go. here's an opportunity. Filio. He's taking the ball away the from the corner. Goal. Look to play this one back to Zapata. White can come on here. Opportunity. This will be a chance for Davies. Now Filio. Davies again. Into the corner. Can he cross it inside? Blocked. Good bit of play by Craig Davies. Weaving his way in and out. Linking up with Filio. Rodriguez will re-enter for this corner. Correct me if I'm wrong, but we haven't seen Paulinho out for Rio this, this half. Uh, no, I don't believe we have. You know, he had that, uh, that made, might have been an injury or oh, it yep. looked like an equipment issue. I don't know if it might have been something with the spike or what, but he, was, he did come off. Yeah, he, did, he didn't limp off or anything. Yeah, so it was off that first step. Opportunity for the corner here. One last chance. One, 90 seconds left in this ball game. Last push, last opportunity forward here for the Red Storm. Can they tack on one more here? 
in the twilight of this match. He's Metz. And Metz is there once again. Oh, he's one-on-one -on -one with Dawson. And Metz is going to have an opportunity all his own. Three on zero. Can they tack on one more? Jermaine Metz. Lay it off. Finish it. Beffy. Can he? No. Cesar Lopez. Stone back well. by Cesar Lopez. Cesar Lopez, he didn't give up on that one. Fair play to him. If they can pull one back, Cesar Lopez. I don't know. That might have been as good as a goal. That was as good as a goal. <laughs> it was. I don't know if Metz couldn't have taken that on his own. 45 seconds. Rodriguez. Arche. Badling. Trying to come up with something here is Rio. Oh, they're in the clear here again. And another opportunity here for Presti. He'll come in one on one with an opportunity to cross That's inside. A foul. And that will be a foul, certainly. That no could questions. be a card. And that will be. Nope. No card coming. Because that would have been the last. That would have been it for Lopez. That would have been him done. And. I don't know if Lopez could have stayed with him. That was maybe a. Lopez and Presti getting a little chippy trying to pick him up there. And that's going to probably be the end of this match. And You don't ever like to see a match in like that in that sort of circumstance. But still, we had quite a battle here tonight. Bellhaven, two, with the late winner from Eduardo Cruz. Rio Grant, one. And really for Bellhaven... What a job they did to pull this one back here, Joel. Uh, they did extremely well. After going 1-0 down early on in the first half, Belhaven really rallied. They, uh, they turned the game around and, and played to their strengths, and uh, Monsoor was able to come on and stamp his authority on the game, and, and they've come away with the win. Still getting a little chippy out here as uh, noticing some of the players having to be held back from one another. Uh, DeMello was getting a little heated, but uh, all is well now that probably both of these teams happy to see the end of this one after a long weekend of play. And, uh, Joel, your takeaways from this one? Uh, it, was, it was a long weekend for both teams. They both um, played a lot, of, a lot of minutes over the two games, especially Belhaven having to back up after a late one last night. Rio Grande uh, playing a very, very long game and going to double overtime. Um, so, you know, it, it could be a fair result. I'm not exactly sure how I feel about the end of that game. Obviously, I'm from Rio, so <laughs> <laughs> it's never good to see your old team lose. But, to be fair, Belhaven played extremely well in the second half. Their first half... Uh, they weren't themselves. They came out in the second half and uh, rectified things. We will speak to our man of the match when we come back. The final score here from Wildcat Field, Marion, Indiana. Bellhaven 2, Rio Grande 1. This is the 2013 Torbo Sports National Men's Soccer Game of the Week on NSCAATV.com. Each year, the NSCAA puts over 7,000 coaches through our coaching education program. Youth, high school, and college coaches at all levels participate in the diploma courses. Join your peers and get educated. Better coaching, better players, better game. NSCAA Coaching Academy. Improving soccer, one coach at a time. Register today at nscaa.com slash education. La, la, tra, la, tra, la. Diversity to meet your individual needs can be challenging. As the nation's only combined private university and public community college, Rio Grande allows students to minimize costs while gaining a global education. Students enjoy the personal attention of a passionate faculty at a 15 to 1 ratio with more than 60 academic programs. So why not choose an institution as unique as you? You're one of a kind. So are we. Finding the right college. Back out here to Wildcat Field in Marion, Indiana. The final score once again, Bellhaven 2, Rio Grande 1. Here with our man of the match, Eduardo Cruz. Eduardo, phenomenal finish there to put the winner in the back of the net. Take us through what you saw on that goal to put you, to, to, to put you guys ahead to a 1. Well, what I saw on that goal was a team behind me that worked very hard. <laughs> a team that deserved to win just because they, they wanted to win. Maybe we didn't, we didn't have our, our best performance of the year, but the goal was not, was not mine at all. The goal was all theirs. They, 
they really, really put me in a position where the finish was the less important thing. The ball went in the back of the net and that victory is, is to them because they deserve it. And I, I'm, I'm including all that, of course, but they battle very, very hard for it. So what I saw was was a team that, see, that they put, they put trust. They like each other. They love each other. So that's what I saw. For you guys, what does this mean for you guys coming off a tough loss last night, a long weekend, battling through the fatigue, everything? What does it mean for you guys, for you guys down there, to get this one a day after a loss like, like last night? In my point of view, it means we're back. It means we are getting our, our, our group together again. It means that we are a team. We battle as a team. And this scene will, re will repeat itself the, the whole season now. Friendship, love, that thing will, will repeat itself. The man said it best. Eduardo Cruz, our man of the match, giving all the love to his teammates. Eduardo, Thank congratulations. You very much. Fantastic finish, and good luck the rest of the season. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Wrapping it up here from Wildcat Field in Marion, Indiana. Fantastic performance by that man, Eduardo Cruz. And the Bellhaven Blazers, two. The Rio Grande Red Storm, one. For my entire production crew, Buzz Mead, all of our cameramen here tonight in Marion, Indiana. My color commentator, Joel Tyree, the Rio Grande All-American. I'm Kyle Robbins. So long and good night. This is the 2013 Torbo Men's Soccer National Game of the Week on NSCAA TV.